This is my path, my journey. I'm willing to explain it all to you guys. No holding back anything. I just hope you're ready for the experience. And I just hope you can handle it. What's going on guys? So, as you can see, I don't know if you can see because there's a light, but it's nighttime. I can't even see anything because this light is so damn bright, so I can really only see the path ahead of me. But, getting ready to do my first candy flip. Getting ready to go to my friend's house. It's about to be a nice experience. It's about 9.30 at night. I will keep you guys updated as the night goes on. Let you guys know what's happening, what's going on. Ooh, it's kind of cold. I can see my breath. <laughs> But today's the first day it snowed here too, so it was pretty dope. But I really appreciate you guys here along for the journey with me to experience this through this camera's eyes. So stay tuned for more. Hey, video update. So it's about that time. And there's going to be some cold Sierra Mist when we come down. <laughs> oh, okay. Appreciate it, bro. Yo, Sierra Mist is probably one of my favorite drinks when I'm coming down. I can't drink a lot of it, but just like an ice cold Sierra Mist just fucking tastes amazing when I'm coming down. <laughs> I can't drink a lot of soda, but just the flavor of it. No, I bet it does, though. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> got a bunch of fruit for when we come down, too. I got now, what I'm noticing about this experience is that I don't have that normal come up anxiety. Usually like I'll have like a slight come up anxiety. Scissors. It's got lines but it's not perforated the rim. Just looks like a piece of paper. And down the hatch. Down the hatch oh. it goes. Like, I just know Remember Cass's one friend? Remember Cass's one friend that told us he got LSD and he tripped for like three days? No, and I just thought to myself that we didn't. It was probably Bromo Dragonfly. I just know the envelope's only worth with like your subtle or whatever. Mm-hmm. Bugle or sublingual. 30 minutes later. And then those are the redoses. Not too long after we took the MDMA, me and Phi really started feeling heavy and it started hitting us pretty quick. It took a little longer for it to hit Earth. So for the meantime, she was up dancing around hula hooping while we were on the ground just sitting down. The deeper in the experience it gets, so it's like, oh Jesus, this phone looks weird. But like the deeper in the experience, like the heavier it gets. Like as soon as the MDMA kicked in, it's like I felt this stony feeling. And like, I don't know whether I'm cold, hot, I, it, but it's beautiful. I was starting to get this euphoric sensation going over my body. It felt like hot and cold flashes but at the same time, it felt tingly. I definitely do not feel like recording a video right now, or even speaking or talking at all. So this video <laughs> idea that I had might be a short video. <laughs> Before I get too heavy again, video update, number I have no idea. Um, 434. <laughs> 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 oh man, I feel so fucking good. I had plans to record and document the whole experience, but as the experience started getting deeper. I started to realize how hard and complicated it was going to be to record most of the experience. So after this clip, I didn't record for about two hours. All right. So Mark's, Mark's over there, so I'm explaining. Four hours in, uh, we just redosed, um, and I'll let him explain the rest. So what's up, guys? Sorry, it's really hard to have you guys here with me because it's so funny that it's like I've talked to a camera right I'm talking to a camera a lot of times I talk to a camera but yet 
I know that there's thousands of people that could okay. see it. You know, there's thousands of people that are watching technically, and it's mm -hmm. like, it's like with that impact. I, I, before I get too sidetracked, I want to make sure it's recording. Ah, fuck, I don't even know how to explain this to you guys. Besides, I didn't record as much as planned. It's like four hours in. We redosed um, the MDMA. And, um, it's such a therapeutic night. It's been such, yeah, it's such a therapeutic night. It's ridiculous. I completely understand why um, MDMA would be used in therapy sessions now or want to. Because I've never done MDMA before until tonight. Well, I mean, you also took a hit of L, too. Don't forget Oh, yeah, that. yeah, and but took a hit of LSD, but... It was the perfect combination where neither one was overpowering the other. No, like, literally mm -hmm. could not turned out more perfect. Yeah, than it. it couldn't have turned out more perfect. Dude, I should be. I began to realize that it was getting really hard to record and talk to a camera because it was almost like taking me out of the experience. So what I decided to do was I put my phone down on the ground and I just let it record our audio. So it got to a point where we even forgot the camera was rolling. Oh my God, I love having an afro. Your afro is yeah, dude, that shit is soft. I wish I, I can't. I can't deny. I wish my hair was like that. I know. Having an afro, this shit feels so different right Can now. Can I feel it again, please? It feels so different right now. <laughs> I don't feel that. What's I feel my afro? It's, it's fucking, fucking soft. soft. <laughs> it's so much different than my hair too. I know. Like if you feel mine, like hair is so dope though. It's my hair is weird, man. But I don't. I don't do anything with it. I just let it go natural. Right. I do got to take a little bit better care of the dreadlocks than I did last time, which is why I say I got to separate them and roll them because, you know, you actually got to do some work to them. Yeah. Last time to I did. To keep them up, to yeah. make sure they keep, but this, yeah. you know, I don't want them to look perfect, but. You can even take some string and wrap some of them individually for like a week or two. And then take the I just want my hair to look like nobody else before us. Yeah. My whole thing, like when I've been saying for years, like I'm an artist. I even told you down by the river, like, there's an artist in me trying to be born. Mm hmm Yeah. Mm hmm All of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The way my yeah, hair is going to be, the way my music's going to be, like, that's, that's my That's your artist. art. That's your artist coming out. And I'm still slowly walking into that, that being. <laughs> who you want to mm -hmm. be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, they've always said, what if the cure of cancer is trapped in a poor man, or a poor... A Eight year old. Yeah. Mine, yeah, poor, mm -hmm. yeah, mine. We don't know. Mm hmm. And because that kid ends up becoming, you know, the way society molds him to be. And that's why we don't know. Mm hmm. Well, that or he'll never get the opportunity to express his intelligence mm -hmm. because of coming from a poor, mm -hmm. poor area. I think that's the issue with all of our, like, because men deal with emotions differently than women. Mm -hmm. but. But it's like, I think with all the... Just our algorithms. Yeah, with all the emotional tension, I think it's, you know, because we're not, we're not doing, we're not facing these things, you know? Because mm -hmm. that's what is, that's my issue is like, I got to start, I, I got to start facing the issues and like, I know love is like, it's, d it's deeper than love is all that exists because love is all that exists, but it's, it's deeper than the word love. Love but it's, is like everything. Yeah. One of my other biggest fears that the only way to stop it is what I do now is I don't want to be 65 years old looking back on my life thinking what if, what could have been, yeah, you know, and I don't want to, because I feel like if I do that, I'm going to be miserable. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you can see that though. You can see it, like I can see it in my third eye. I can mm -hmm. see it in like, like as plain as day that I could be that guy at my, at my deathbed that, that regrets, mm -hmm. or I could be that guy at my deathbed that's like, I fuck lived a good yeah, life. I lived and I tried. I tried my mm -hmm. goddamn hardest. I had a vision on mushrooms. It was by myself for the first time I grew up with house and eating the mushrooms. Of myself as an old woman. And the last words I told myself, like, as if, like, I died and was reborn here. My last word was, don't regret anything in life. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. feel like so far I, I've been doing a pretty good job. Right. I mean, there's a couple things I do kind of wish I... At this point, I regret nothing because everything has led us up to this very moment. This very now. moment. Because if anything dra small, even if anything small changed in our lives, we wouldn't be sitting here mm -hmm. together right now. I know. Mm -hmm. That's what the Ambomish trip showed me. Is choice is everything. So it's like every if, 
choice that we make, every second of that choice is determined by life. Everything. And it's also this, the crazy part is, if we weren't conditioned by our parents and, you know, d wrongfully, whatever, it's not their fault, but all that conditioning, if that didn't happen to us, we still wouldn't be here. That's, way, the, that's the crazy way. part, in the weird fucking twisted way, you know? Because we have to go through this. So I just think that's a sign that everything's in a line. Mm-hmm. Everything that's going to happen. Everything's happens. all happening for the purpose of awakening consciousness. Yep. That's what my LSD trips have been telling me for years. <laughs> I just haven't wanted to fucking actually say, yeah, this is it. Fucking live by it. I'm losing my train of thought right now, but... It's okay. Yeah, it'll come back. It's making sense in my head when I'm thinking about it. I just can't get the words out right now. Cause Eng because English does not... Yeah. It doesn't even... Ah, English. Ah, oh, Jesus, English. It doesn't even compare. I feel like most human languages. Yeah, no human language is going to describe this. We, we'd have to create our own language to describe this. Mm hmm No fucking language. Can I just please put my hand on your forehead? And feel and see. Yeah, yeah. Like, right. feel, see. Like, then we don't need a language. If we could, if we could gap that telepathic barrier, we're yes. like, where I could just go like this. Like, we already And now that. I feel, now I feel all her pain. Right. She feels all mine. Uh -huh. I know, I know who she is just by, by doing that. By doing that. Just by feeling. Mm -hmm. They've actually done studies, um, where like, not that they were like harming the babies, but they put a bunch of babies into a room, and they didn't teach them no language, and over time they developed. Mm -hmm. They created their. They own would create their own language. language. Yeah. It's basically like almost telepathy because they weren't even really speaking. They mm -hmm. would just do like body language <coughs> and her. Mm -hmm. Me and Courtney have been having a lot of weird telepathy moments where I was thinking something. She said the exact same thing, and it was just mm -hmm. you'll start to notice it a was lot just more. It, it was like mm -hmm. Jesus, hey. like this is happening. Like it happened so much today. Mm -hmm. It was weird. Hey. More. Yeah, this started yeah. happening to this me and her back in 2013. Works. Uh, Listen mm -hmm. to those frequencies more. Mm -hmm. Then you'll be able to read her thoughts. Then you'll know if she's upset before when you're she in a, will tell you. She when right. you're in a room full of people and you say something and then two or three people go, Yo, I was just thinking that. Mm -hmm. That's telepathy. That's telepathy. Y'all are all on the same wavelength. wavelength or frequency right there. And y'all just don't want to see it. Mm hmm Telepathy is much more powerful than we realize. Oh, yeah. I think it's easier than we realize. <laughs> it's a lot, yeah, it's probably a lot easier. And because it's, we... it's even powerful on an emotional level, too, though. Well, because you have to be vulnerable. For with telep for... Also, with telepathy, though, you couldn't lie to anybody. Yeah, that's no. something you have to be completely yep. vulnerable. And humans as a society, I don't know if we're ready for that. The most aren't, but they can be transitioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Sure. We, we were. I truly feel like that's what LSD is for, is to help people transition into reclaiming their mind. Hundred uh, percent. I think that LSD is here for the purpose of evolution for the human consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In a weird way, I'm not saying the mushrooms and peyote doesn't do the same, because by all means, oh my goodness, I think they do. But I think LSD is. The they all have their own. Purpose. purpose. LSDs is just evolutionary. Yeah. It really is. Because like, it took science to make it. It took science to make it and like... The way it works with your brain. Yeah, the way it works is Bridges, just... It, it works, it does something different that DMT never did to my mind. Mm -hmm. If I never did LSD, I wouldn't have been able to apply. It bridges, I know for a fact LSD bridges the logical part of your brain to your creative part. Mm. Which is why artists have a lot of hard time because they're like... Oh, my music has to be this way. Oh, my lines have to be perfect. That's, that's like me. That's like that's, me, Jesus. That's the logicalness in us. Uh, we just need to be creative. Mm -hmm. Creative doesn't care. Creative doesn't think. Creative yeah, just it creates. Just, it just, just does. does. It, it just does. does. Because that's, how, that's what I mean with my beats. That's why I can't make beats for other people. Like I have It people, just does, and you either do or you don't. Yeah. Right. But it's like, for me, when I make beats, I... I put all my feelings into that beat and, and I that's beautiful. and mm -hmm. I can't really um I can't make beats for other people though is the issue with that that's that I feel like that's where I'm at like the beats I'm at that I think are real good I'm like I don't even know if anyone could rap over that because then yeah 
Because it's just music. It's just my emotion. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'd have to rap or sing over it. Some of my beats, I'm like, I might, I was thinking, you know, I might even make a, you know, I really want to make an album. Like, I'm, I have so many thoughts and ideas in my head, like, that I don't even bring up to you most of the time. I don't know why I don't bring up a lot of my thoughts, but, but it's like, all these ideas that I have, they're like, bro, we can literally, yeah, make this music, make an impact. I've had one idea. You know, Ryan was always wondering about my YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. I should tell Ryan, hey, why don't you create a YouTube channel where me and you will just play music for people and entertain them? Every week. Every week. Mm. Every day. Mm-hmm. Just like you and... Are you doing and... that, bro? You started that... You start his life off with a... With a change because, you know, then he'll have a little power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, this is where I've always said, man, I've got this, some great ideas, but I never follow through with the action. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is the, now is like the perfect time for me to start taking to action through. on everything. I have an idea, or I had an idea that just came back to my mind because I lost it. <laughs> um, I used to write poetry and I still do every now and then. You guys are welcome to like read over them and get inspired by them or use whatever words Yo, I guarantee you I can mm. turn any one of your uh, poems, po- poems into, into a flow. A flow. Yes. Yep. I'm really interested in seeing it now because I truly believe that I can flow anything. And I only say that. I only say that because I've been talking so much recently about how I'm in my car just freestyling uh-huh. every day going to yeah. work. Half the shit I say don't make sense, but my flow Which is... Which flow's on point. The flow's on point. That's how I feel about me. I, my, I think my music is where I keep my ego. Mm-hmm. Where I always kept my ego. Like, as the whole DMT, all that shit was going down, I was just, you know, destroying the person I thought I was. I always kept my ego secretly in my music where I was like... Yeah, I'm the fucking shit. When I when I make this music, like ain't nobody was, fucking with me. I think part of my biggest issue the last few years is trying to kill the ego. That like I don't realize it's me and how useful it can actually be. Yeah, because yeah, it's the thing that's... that I literally almost became like this person who was trying to be egoless, and he just ended up getting walked all over by everybody. That's what happens when you're mm-hmm. egoless. Completely egoless, at least. Yeah, now it's time to get this ego back, but. I'm in control of it. Mm-hmm. No amount of money or anything can influence what I'm going to do. Because your YouTube channel, you might not have much subscribers right now. That's not because you don't post much. Mm-hmm. But, but no, I, I know I was getting some love from people out there oh, already. Yeah. Like, I was um, going to say, you have, your videos through, have thousands of views, yeah, yeah. I was going through the comments the other day and someone was like, why'd you stop making videos? Right. On one of my videos. And the more you do it, the more comfortable uh-huh. it is in front of the camera. Because like I can... I could talk to the camera like it's you, or like it's, you know, and I just try to think to myself, you know, that it's like a person. But that's why I think you guys would find some inspi- inspiration with it, because I think you guys would like it. So yeah. we'll create the beat. He can write his own stuff. I can still write my own stuff, and I can still even take your lyrics and fucking turn them into singing. Yeah. Singing mm-hmm. or rapping, whatever one yeah, works. Yeah, that's what that I'm would saying. be dope. Yeah, that would be dope. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd be happy with that. And I'll, awesome. even, I'll even yeah. gladly admit that I have a ghostwriter. Fuck because yeah. My wife is my ghostwriter. I was like, yeah, my wife, right. My wife is my ghostwriter, motherfucker. <laughs> my ghostwriter, die. <laughs> Fuck yeah. But realistically, we're all helping each other. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would hope that one day if I got a large enough canvas that you guys want to paint with me someday. Oh, uh, absolutely. Really I'll good. try, yeah. I'd give it a shot. It'd just be fun. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's absolutely. not even anything. Just throw paint with me. I should, I should try to paint with you one of these days just to keep my mind occupied and off of Facebook. If you ever find yourself just, just distracted on Facebook and she's painting, yeah. you know, just, just go over there and join. Just start painting. I'll keep my mind off smoking cigarettes. Mm-hmm. I gotta slow down on I gotta fucking slow down on kratom. I honest. only had three I only had three cigarettes yesterday. I'm proud of myself. I'm definitely probably gonna want one when I come down, and I'm aware of that. So I'll probably smoke one when I come down. Oh, I'm aware that I'm probably gonna want kratom because the first thought that came to mind when uh when the MDMA, MDMA started, started running off was, was like, kratom. Fucking kratom. Yeah. yeah. Definitely definitely wait till like wait an, I'll wait. An hour. I'll definitely wait, wait till like eight o'clock in the morning. I'll definitely wait yeah. it out. Either eight or nine. When I'm like getting ready to crash. Pretty much, that's when we about take hours. And thank you so much for bringing some more. Oh, that's not a problem. 
You guys yeah, I felt bad calling right back after. Like, oh, you're good. You're I just good. completely forgot about it because I was just so excited to tell you. Yeah, man. That yeah, man. Let's go. It was so. I mean, yeah, that's no, how you know we're all connected because yeah, I'm literally was just getting ready to walk. Out I literally like had my shoes on, and I mean, it, no way. Yeah, it's just it was perfect timing. And all that did was originally to call and say, "Hey, man, you can come over whenever." I had a. Because I was... And he was like, oh, I, I was just getting ready to walk out the door. I could tell that Courtney answered the phone, and I uh-huh. was almost waiting for her to be like, yo, on his way already. Uh-huh. I was waiting for uh-huh. her to, like, say that through the phone. But that's kind of... That's funny. That's right. kind of cool. That's telepathic connection. That's, that's connection uh-huh. right there. I mean, we were waiting for you, so that's funny. <laughs> I was thinking about it all day, so... <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a lot harder to tip over on a tricycle than it is a bicycle. Ooh. Unless you're going real fast and you get wobbling. But we won't get into all the aerodynamics. <laughs> right real Th- I feel like what I'm trying to say is three wheels would be sturdier than two. Yeah. Okay. So look at each one of us as one of the wheels. As a wheel. Oh. Much sturdier. Uh-huh. I got my two rider dies. Fuck yeah. And then we get a couple more of these rider dies in. Now we got a whole fucking, fucking wolf pack. See, that's what I've actually been trying to do. And I've been, I don't know why I don't talk to you guys you know about what, this. You know what gave me that idea huh. um, about getting this group of people together is the TV show Entourage. Never heard of it. You should watch it. You like it. It's right. about this dude, Vince, who brings all of his like friends from back home to the movie life with him in L.A. And like he hires them, he employs them just so he can be with them, like. They're that's friends. yeah. Mm. That's that's his on, that's his entourage. Right. Like they work together. Ride or die. Yeah, that's that's what I'm got. trying to do is find a group of people like that. That like yo, ride or die. Let's get this shit done, man. That's what I've been kind of trying to do. Well, I can see. I think something's trying to do it for me. Cause it's like I feel like once you start doing the path, the path will start speaking to you. And it's almost like I have all these people now that hit me up on YouTube that want to connect. You know, and I'm realizing that these are just other psychedelic YouTubers. These are psychedelic people just like us. Mm-hmm. They're, just, yeah. They're just looking for that connection. connection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, and I think that the community that we could have, we could be, we literally could Dude, be the having... the psychedelic community is huge. We literally could be having these type of conversations at symposiums with Dennis McKenna. Mm-hmm. That shit's real. Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So oh yeah, he's I still kicking. Fucking, I, yeah. I'm, I'm fucking right, he's still kicking. Mm-hmm. I just know that Terrence passed, so like, yeah. I didn't know how old both of the babies. Terrence was the oldest brother, but how old is Dennis? Not to right know. now, he's probably in his sixties, maybe. Sixties, seventies. I, I just, wa- I was just curious because like you saying that he's going to all these seminars and whatnot. How much longer? Yeah, Joe Rogan still has him on the Joe Rogan yeah. experience from time to time. Yeah. And he actually has a, he has an organization that I'm actually going to be, once my business starts pulling in enough money when I can do this, I'm going to be donating um, like a percentage to his uh, foundation or something because he has like a, it's kind of like the scientific version of maps. Okay. And Dennis McKenna runs it. So, you know, I was thinking about donating to that, donating to maps, uh, donating to a few other things. By Dr. Bronner's soap. I guess Mavs isn't so much on the spiritual side. Yeah, but still, yeah, by Dr. Bronner's soap, soap, though. Dr. Bronner's donated $5 million. To Mavs. To Mavs for their MDMA research on PTSD patients. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Get his soap. Dr. Bronner's, uh, you'll find it. Dr. Bronner's, isn't that that, it's more, it's gonna be, that toothpaste yeah, you guys? Yeah. It's going to be a little more expensive and a little different. But it's yep. they got different shampoos. Different body wash. I don't know if I've seen deodorant from. Not from him, or is that just Kiss? Uh, yeah, we get the Kiss deodorant, but yeah, I'm sure Dr. Bronner's does have deodorant. I just haven't bought any. He's basically all natural stuff. Yeah, so we really like him. A right, lot. that's yeah. dope. Yeah. And Do we have that old bottle, bottle? of eucalyptus stuff? I'll go try to look for because that, that bottle has some so very cool. interesting things written on it. I was just mm. thinking of that too. Are you recording? Yep. That's awesome. Everything we've been talking about, man. It's fucking awesome. I am too, I think. Yep, and this will stay on for... So I apologize, guys, that the video is like this, but a lot of this is going to be just audio, and I will make it look... I will make the video look pretty for you guys, so you guys can have some cool images and stuff to look at while we're having 
interesting conversations. Make slideshows and stuff in nature. <laughs> yeah, this will stay on for 86 hours till the battery dies. Or Jeez. until it runs out of memory recording, whatever happens first. I just cleared but... my, I cleared my entire SD card. Yeah, this has been recording for 21. Um, I just, I just transferred everything on my computer. This has been recording for um, 21. So, so I just had, so I had room on my phone to record for that. Because I didn't know how many hours I wanted to record for. But I didn't really record what I wanted to record. Right, it really is hard to try to record your experiences when you're so in the experience. The experience. Mm -hmm. I think that's, you know, other people don't get into the experiences we do. So I'm not, I'm not saying that to seem more egotistical, but like we get in it. We're like, if you're able to like drop something like that and still like go do normal yeah, things, then what if the you're fuck still trying to broadcast live on YouTube, like you're doing something wrong. <laughs> right. I mean, that's what a lot of the things, like, there is the, there is, there's like two sides of the psychedelic community. Well, there's a few, but there's like two major yeah. sides I see in YouTube reality, which is that there are some psychedelic teachers that they're usually the biggest teachers out, out there. They usually don't really n have much substance in their videos, don't really know much, don't really know much about the experience there's besides they've done a lot of trip yeah. tripping. But I think that's a reason, I think there's a reason for that. What's so funny is that the biggest people don't have much substance in their videos, but the, the ones that don't really get notarized, those are the ones that have mm -hmm. the most substance. And that's why they didn't get notarized, because mm -hmm. there's something stopping them from getting notarized. Mm -hmm. But something like this is an unstoppable force. Yeah, it is. Because we have to realize that it's unstoppable. Because it's bigger than us. Mm -hmm. It's big, yeah. It's well, if what we're doing is trying to awaken consciousness as a whole, then I feel like it's safe to say what we're doing or trying to accomplish is bigger than us. Bigger than even our souls, souls. you know what I mean? Our individual souls. And, you know, if we're doing it for the whole, it's the soul of the whole. It's the goal of the whole. Well, these experiences, these trances that we get into sometimes, I feel like I'm sacrificing my whole being for the whole world. Mm. To feel all of this pain and to release it. Well, I definitely think women go through a different experience where you know, maybe women have to feel pain maybe because Mother Earth is feeling pain. Well, that's what I mean. Like, I feel like I feel connected to the whole world and I feel like pain to everything. Right. For a lot of other human beings, it kind of disconnects you. Mm hmm. Yeah, most people don't even know Mother Earth exists. Yeah, or that she's even a, a being of herself too. Mhm. Mm that's why I take like that's why I take these plants every day like I do, and like I'm I can't wait till I can get my other plants like Blue Lotus and Wild Daga and Damiana, Jonastema. I can't wait till I can get all that in order, in stock. So it's like I can help give people something else other than kratom. Mhm. Mm yeah. Because I know kratom's slightly addictive, so it's like. You wish you could get yeah, so I, I wish I had more options, but because I, I know those other options helped me. But at the same time, I guess in a more positive light to be looking at it too is like, wouldn't you rather them be addicted to the kratom than out there doing fentanyl or heroin, which could easily kill them? Yeah, hundred percent though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. I'd much rather. Kratom, kratom has not been proven yet alone to kill anybody. Yeah, those. I don't think. Yeah, I don't know, think kratom. Fake news. Yeah, I definitely no, think that's fake news. fake news. Because, and you know what's crazy? I agree. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Like, what if all of our news was fake news? Literally. Ooh. You got to remember, there's five corporations. Mm -hmm. Five major corporations. Right. That own all of the media. Which is so crazy if you really think about it. They control everything we watch. Those five corporations, yeah. And if we had that power, though, bro, if we had that... We would be, I guess the whole, we'd be able to show them what we want mm -hmm. and what the whole wants instead of them having the... I also had this vision in my head that like what I'm doing is we'll wake up more people from the Matrix than ever before. Right. I think it's definitely going to happen with technology. And that's, why, and that's why the Matrix was so profound to me 
And then I even saw The Matrix in some of my visions. Oh, The Matrix was one of my favorite mm-hmm. interpretations, like my, movies. All my visions from the past few years are starting to all make sense now. Not to sound weird, but can we like just hold hands for a minute? Yeah, yeah. Hands might be sweaty, guys. That's okay. I just wanted to. <laughs> Get a ball in there. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you for both being a part of it. Mm-hmm. I really appreciate you guys just being in my life. Like, really. Yeah, we appreciate they you. They don't hug enough, bro. No, I know they, they don't. don't. But yeah, I just like I was telling him, like I've I've had very few friends that are actually just friends. They all hung around because I got Still something, I, I got so. something they want, or I had money, so I would buy shit for the parties. Yeah. It's like <laughs> I never really had too many people just want to know how I'm doing and just know how you yeah, really, how you are, how it? I am, and what's really going on. I like to think that's not true with everybody. Not everybody, but some of the people. You'll be like, you, you'll be able to see. MDMA. Oh my I god. I feel like I feel MDMA. like if if it was there more, I don't trust anybody's MDMA. Yeah, I, know, I don't trust any, right, I don't trust anyone else's MDMA. Yes, I, if it wasn't for you guys, I would probably no, never like, have done MDMA. On her on her birthday, you'll get to see where it's just slightly different doing the MDMA. Just by it, doing it just so. just okay. just by itself. You guys don't mind me being there. No, oh, no, no, not that's at all, man. Said, yeah, she would want you to bring Courtney too, yeah. so we okay. can all roll oh, yeah. together. Yeah, please. I'll definitely yeah, talk can, to you. I'll definitely talk to you. We can have a, a fun night, and I definitely think the MDMA would help her open up and be more comfortable about opening up to people. people. Mm-hmm. It helped me a lot, and you can yeah. tell mm-hmm. her that. Like, you can even tell her I'm still like nervous to talk mm-hmm. to people and open up, but it's helped me so right. much. And the I one thing I've noticed with her, like, she's changed a lot in four months. And it's mainly, I think the one thing, like, we had this conversation one time, and this conversation was just, like, about life. One of these type of conversations. Mm-hmm. One of these moments. And I, and I had it with her, though, and it just clicked. Mm-hmm. And, like, then she started watching, like, she started watching Oprah. Like, to be, fun, like, not even funny, she started watching Oprah. You know what's cool? And, like, literally she started watching her like a mentor. And, like, started, like, Watching how open. yo maybe something you said just opened up a doorway in her brain and something just clicked. That's what I mean. Maybe that's all it takes for okay. someone to reclaim their mind is just one person to make something just click. click. Something that makes sense. Because mm-hmm. that's all these trips are kind of like epiphanies. Right. Things that we should already know. Well, I mean, if she's looking at Oprah as a mentor, that's 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 a good mentor to have. As first billionaire <laughs> woman, only billionaire mm-hmm. woman. That's and, great. And Crazy. and watching and, and watching the things Courtney watches about her. She, she Oprah was, did a lot with her money. Yeah, She's and doing when Oprah was Courtney's age, she was broke in between jobs. Yep. So Oprah had some harsh times. Yo, those are the aliens that I saw on the oh, trip last they year. Were, yeah. They looked more And this is the, the song. Weird song. What? Out. No fucking no way. way. Can we save this? Save it. Does that change? Remember last year when I was like, yo, there's, there's aliens, aliens on the screen. They look like fucking aliens. That was them, yeah. and this is the song. Wow. Wow. Are you serious? Yeah. Say that, because I do like the song. It's fucking weird. Synchronicity. You, you will, I wanted to say this earlier on your post, and I didn't. You will begin to appreciate rituals more, which is part of the pagan and, like, Native American type mm-hmm. thing. I like our rituals, like the September 21st is like the first ritual that we've done since 2012. Right. And I think you will grow a sense of re- appreciation I think because it's like... There's something different about a ritual sense to it. Yeah. 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 When you have like a ritual to it, it's, mm-hmm. it's just, it's a little Traditional, different. Traditional, yeah. I feel like. It feels more real. Mm-hmm. And it gives us proper time to like prepare and just get ready for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm still mind blown that this song is on right now. Because we didn't have it saved on a playlist, and this is just We YouTube. haven't heard it since. And this is... That's wild. It's like the universe did this for us. 
to let us know that we're still on track. Mm -hmm. That we're on track, yep. Because that's what the universe, I forgot who the fuck said it. Somebody said the universe speaks in signs to you. Mm -hmm. We talked about that two, mm -hmm. three years ago. That everything that is out in front of us was placed for our own awakening. Mm -hmm. Every movie that I watch was, was for there? my own awakening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every book I've read is for my own awakening. Mm -hmm. Meeting the people I've met is for my own awakening. Right. Mm -hmm. But I also think some of the things that are there for are like society trying to put things in there as well. Mm -hmm. That's like we gotta try to wean out society's things and what's funny is like I had a small flash of Jim Carrey on that Embo Vision too. Mm-hmm. Jim Carrey was mm -hmm. in there. And now look I at him. Now look at yeah. him. All of a sudden That's five wild, years bro. later, like because um Jim Carrey's I, I even, birthday's two days after mine. Um fun. what I really made or what stood out in my mind from that trip about him was just the movie Yes Man and how about saying yes, yes to opportunities. opportunities. Yeah. You'll never know what arises. Mm-hmm. Which I remember that discussion on the emblem experience mm -hmm. too. And which is funny because we were sitting like how we are right now and there was like a box right here and it was like surrounded by clouds. In this box I was able to look into the apartment. I could see you in the bathroom, me in the bedroom and seeing Josh and Adina. That's that's deep. Yeah. They, were, they were freaking out when we were just having the time of our lives. lives. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to figure out life. Trying yeah. to figure out things at that point, yeah. Literally. But life. because he couldn't control the situation, it made him more anxious. Right. Instead of him letting go and just going with it. Because here's another thing. We had full-on telepathy that night. Mm -hmm. More than once an occasion. Like, we, were we, also, were, we were also on to something that night, too. We were on to something. Mm -hmm. And we were in separate rooms, and I feel like something was happening very... Fucking, I don't even know. Yeah, because I remember I mind. even brought up the Illuminati and Josh. Mm -hmm. and that's yes. what Josh. Yep, that's what that's what set Josh <laughs> off, because it thought it was sending you into a bad trip when I got talking about the Illuminati. Uh, yeah, more and more is coming back from that embalm mm -hmm. trip. Mm -hmm. Yep. I can't remember most of what was the experience. If there's a real Illuminati, the Illuminati is a. It's not higher group of beings that's actually helping us to awaken. Uh -huh. Because they themselves are more enlightened. Yeah. So they only want to see us totally. awaken. Yeah. The We're the false Illuminati or the people that are on this planet trying to control everything. Like our government. Mm-hmm. Is it that's the false? It's not see my thing is I don't know if it's necessarily the government. Or it's just the people that are in charge of the government. Because if people like us were in charge of the government, would it still be the government that we know to hate? I don't know. Exactly, yeah. It's so... I just feel like, in a way, the natives had it right, where they lived in tribes. Mm -hmm. They didn't have these huge, gigantic cities. Right. Some places did. I mean... Other look places at all, had a well, bigger culture. Yeah. Look at, I mean, look at Teotihuacan down in Mexico. Wasn't that a big place? Where's the phone? Oh, God. Oh, you got to see pictures of this place. Is it huge? Google's right there. Use the computer. Good call. Music plays in the background still. Mm -hmm. I just learned, so on my computer, I have this thing called Katora, Katana, Katara, whatever. Um... And it's like the artificial intelligence thing you could talk to, so I could just click a button and talk to it. What are you just gonna Google? Some tribe. Ah, Teotihuacan. 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 You don't have to type in Google. You can click the top bar and it'll take you to Google. Look, that word Teotihuacan. 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 Yo, that's wild. Would you guys believe that sort of? I feel like I just put it down. Yeah. It was like 45 oh, minutes ago. Shit, I actually spelled that right. Fuck yeah. No way. That means you're in the zone right now, bro. Teotihuacan. This is Teotihuacan, City of the Sun. And that's still oh my god. This is this, pi this big pyramid right here, they call it this the Pyramid is, of the Sun. There was still an active tribe. No, no, it's the tribe disappeared. Okay. Um, but is it not interesting how they resemble, you know, pyramids from Egypt? Yeah. 
that were built yeah. around the same time. Also, in Teotihuacan, besides this one big pyramid, there's like 13 of the smaller ones. And each I'm one, big, each big. one represents a planet I'm big, I'm circling big. the sun. I'm big on 13. <laughs> My fantasy storybook that I've written when I was little dealt with 13 and superheroes. Ooh. And each, each of them were able to do something different. Well, we're the first three. Uh, let me see if I can ooh. find where it actually <laughs> shows. But like Teotihuacan, also like you can see how it's like stretched out to where each one of the planets is. That's wild, bro. Oh, hold on one second. You're good. I know the one pyramid in Egypt is supposed to be a compass, but it's now off. I think it's like a pyramid dream. But a certain distance away is another pyramid from this one. Like I said, there's 13 other smaller one. pyramids. Right. And each one of those other ones, I believe, is supposed to represent a different a planet. planet. Probably. But why is it 13? 13, maybe there's like... We only got eight planets now because they said, fuck Pluto. No, Pluto's still a planet. Yeah, Pluto's a planet fuck, in my eyes. Fuck vagina. Them. What if those 13 planets aren't even... What if Earth is just one of them and none of the other planets in our galaxy are, is? What if it's just Earth from our galaxy and planets from other galaxies? <gasps> yeah? Yeah, and then it's just like a connecting dot of all mm -hmm. of yeah. The universe is a lot more infinite than we think. And so it's like, even if you go up past Pluto... You didn't even leave, you know, the you didn't backyard. even, yeah. Oh. You're okay. I don't think anything's spilled. Um, oh, yeah, I already packed it. Nice. Yeah. You should put your grinders over there, though. Oh, that's, I'm so glad I packed that earlier. Because you would have dumped it? Yep, I would have dumped it. Oh, that's why that won't s s screw on. Is that the right one for that? No. Remember, because my old, my old one's red too, so I've done that a couple times. That's why I thought it was the right one. It just keeps like screwing, it doesn't actually hook on. But yeah, the original point that I was making with uh, Teotihuacan is like, that would basically be like a big city where it said tribal people were living. Mm -hmm. But I feel like a city like that had to have some type of extraterrestrial influence. They had some sort of leadership. Something, something, yeah. a something. chief, a leader, something. something, some human being that reclaimed his mind and was able to manifest. Because I don't like to think that all native tribes have like this leader of the tribe, but I know I do like to think too that there was a chief or whatever you want to call him, a leader of yeah. the clan, like mm -hmm. the shaman. Yeah. Who, who just wanted his best interests of the people, so he would probably be his. I just gotta move right now. That's not always the case, though. Like because uh, there's this one I was researching the story about the the Icaros or Ikero Ikeroys or something. Ikeros. The no the 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 Indians that were around in this area, like the Native Americans that I were from here. Yeah, I know what you're um, talking about. One of the shamans, like, was he was just a madman. He wasn't really. He didn't have love intentions. He had just <gasps> selfish intentions. So he was uh so. I guess not all shamans, not all people that see this will want to do good with it. Right, no, I know that's that. That's one of the main reasons I... I noticed that when you were living here, you just didn't want to be that fucking rude friend, mm -hmm. like always, being honest about how I feel. Like, don't be sad about it. That's what I gotta stop too. Don't be, they don't be, be sad about how you feel. They want to be your friend when it's convenient for, for them. For them, right. But it just breaks my heart that I see that happen to my friends. Like, you guys get walked out in the news. I uh, don't like that. Right, no. It sucks when you have, when you see friends getting, you know. Maybe one day it'll all just click. It'll One day it will click. But then I, I fear it'll be too late for them, though. Because a lot of times that's what happens with all of us. One day it clicks, but most of the time it's too late for I don't it to know, just, it, it all seems like it's clicking for me right now. So. Me too, though. Me too. But what is too late? I feel like there's no such thing as too late. I think only too late is our opportunity, our chance to make, make the difference or that they let the society win. Okay, so there's no such thing as too late, except for what you dictated to be. Mm. <laughs> there's no such thing as too late. 
It'll come back tomorrow. Oh, you're good. I like how you have that, though. I see where you're going with yeah. that. MDMA, man. <laughs> That's the only negative. Yeah. I love MDMA, though. Oh, like, no. Yes. I told you candy flipping is... Beautiful. I have this really complete... Amazing. Yeah. I knew you loved and with the, the, oh my God, with the yeah. dosages we did, it was, like, perfect the way they're complimenting each other. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome that you had about the one more dose, too. Yeah, and it's, it's awesome that it worked. It's awesome that I had enough for us to redose. Yeah, I don't know why I was nervous to redose, to be honest. When I when the first time you mentioned it, there was something that happened. I was like, dude, I'm already feeling so good. Right. I know what you mean. But I was like, no, nah, I, I get exactly why. You can you can feel it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can feel you starting to s- slowly fade out of that mindset. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that's a mindset. You can stay in. With doing the proper herbs and stuff, doing herbs, making teas, eating a healthy diet, and just practicing, I feel like exercise. Yeah, it's a I mindset. Feel like it's a mindset can... you can almost stay in. And I think you want to know why? Because I think it's like psychedelics are just molecules. Mm-hmm. Plants contain a shit ton of molecules. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think molecules contain knowledge. Mm-hmm. And it's very possible. I like the well, I like the way you put that actually, that molecules can contain. Knowledge or information or even wisdom. Well, yeah. who was it that said that we're on the we're coming to an age where it's not about what book you read to learn, it's about what chemical you took. So you took, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Tim- I don't remember. Tim- Timothy, Leary's, yeah. Timothy Leary's quote: "We're now in the psychochemical <laughs> era, where in the future it's not going to be what book you read, but what chemical you took to expand your consciousness." Yeah. I feel like we're pretty much right yeah, there. Yeah, we're, we're right much, there. We're pretty much there now because, like, you got people all, all over the place on these groups I'm in asking about 2CP, 2, 2CI, 2CE. Yeah. Like, everyone wants to find out about these chemicals. <laughs> and I tell, and I, I tell people, some of them are very fun. Just be very, very careful because, like, the 2Cs, you only need, like, 20 milligrams. So if you don't have a scale like this, you can't even weigh it out. Yeah, yeah you're kind of fucked. People weigh out a point one, point two, that's that could that could almost kill you. Yeah. Because a standard dose of something like two CE, yeah, it's twenty milligrams. Jesus. Um, so that'd be so much. Yeah. Back in two thousand. That's crazy. Back in two thousand thirteen, when I was working at Domino's, Brian Kane's roommate, when I was there smoking with him one time, was talking about how. Um, and it fucked a lot of things up for him. He got sold something he thought was MDMA, and it turned out to be 2CE. Damn. Oh, wait. Yeah. I was going to talk about Brian. How was it that much no. of a difference? Jesus. This dude snorted like 100 milligrams of 2CE. Yeah. He was telling me about how horrible his experience Look was. Look at my face. Sounds like it'd be horrible. The I'm most two CE I've, I've you, the yeah. most two CE I've ever done is forty milligrams. Now it's not like LSD where you double the dose, it goes double the intensity. Mm-hmm. No, the, this thing goes up. Yeah, it's got like a, a curve like that where like you take there's a certain three threshold. milligrams. It yeah. feels like you took ten. Yeah, uh-huh. three, sometimes three milligrams more can feel like you just 20. you doubled your dose. Literally. Yeah, that's where that's the re- crazy. yeah that's where the research chemicals can be dangerous. Yeah, I can imagine unless, because unless that's people not people are knowledgeable. That's not really known because I don't know much about research chemicals, you know. So I don't really know anything about research chemicals besides I first researched after the Shogun today. Definitely, I'm gonna have to start pushing in my videos and if we when when we do the podcast. Um, so maybe we can get like sponsored by Dance Safe or whatever, or one of the drug testing. Yeah. Oh yeah. People. I- I'll definitely put some things in the action mm-hmm. on my side. Because um, I'll even call, we, we can even use the slogan, test your supply before you get high. Right. Yeah, you should fucking... Test it before you ingest it. You should, it. like... <laughs> as long as you say that, I don't business. They what, can't ingest anything. What is, test it before you ingest it. Fucking own that, whatever you want to say. Same. Yeah, just, like, own that. Patent it. <laughs> Patent it, thank you. Yeah. I couldn't even think of a word. I just couldn't imagine what this dude was going through on 150 or 100 milligrams of fucking. That's what I'm trying to comprehend because.
I used to just do usually 25. That was my dose. Okay. One time, I was like, I want to go up just three. This is going up to 28 milligrams. It's going from 25 to 28. This shit felt like I took 30 more milligrams. God damn. That's how intense more it gets. So I can't even imagine where this dude is at for like that amount. Let me see if I can find 2CE on Arrowhead real quick. And don't get me wrong, I think it has the least negative effects to your body out of all the research chemicals that we've tried at least. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I mean, he didn't die from taking that much. He just, he well, said it was, nice. he said it was so uncomfortable. He said, like, he probably felt overwhelmed. It was probably yeah, just too much. he said it was just complete sensory overload. Like, his body was, like, going in shock. He said, like, he couldn't see anything because the colors were just... I'm surprised he didn't get yeah. motion sickness. Because uh, I got that on 2CE a couple of times. Dude, 2CE had some of the wildest, most intricate visuals, really? too, man. Yeah. I did some if if I can ever find some I'd be glad to do it with you. I definitely but it's probably one I'd rather do maybe outside on an all day long adventure. Okay. And yeah. this um, one you're gonna want to definitely It'll give you for. it'll give you a bunch of energy and you'll wanna be like out walking when you're on it. And it's huh. longer than L S D. It's twelve hours. Oh. Damn. Yeah. It's great for festivals. Yeah, <laughs> right. They're all mescaline durations, Yeah, it right? says it says total duration Mescal. four to nine hours, but I'm telling you, I've tripped for a hard 12 off 2CE. 12, yeah, I've tripped for 12 off of 2CE, too. Well, I'll definitely trust your guys' personal experience. Well, we're also little people, too. We're all about the same size, though. Like, mm. you're smaller than us because you're a female, but... We're, we're kind of the same But thing. see, a heavy dose of 2CE insufflating it, because here's the thing. 10 milligrams up the nose is equal to like 25, 30 milligrams swallowed. Mm -hmm. So like, you gotta be careful with that. This poor kid snorted 100 milligrams. Oh and my God. And they say a heavy, and they say a heavy dose for snorting is 10 plus milligrams. Oh Jesus. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he had a sensory overload. I'm surprised he didn't go to the hospital. But yeah, see how it's like every five milligrams with this? Light is 5 to 10, common 10 to 15, strong 15 to 30, heavy 25 to 40. Yeah. 40, is, to 40 is the strongest I've gone to. And 28 was mine. I'll tell you what, man, 40 fucking blew me away. It was very deep in my mind is what I liked about it. Because <laughs> no, I think, I think yeah, I think, I think with the two C's, Josh was looking for more something that was euphoric and just... Pleasurable. Yeah, pleasurable. Not like, I wasn't really coming into this experience to feel good necessarily. I don't know. I thought it was going to go the opposite of what it did for me. I had no expectations for this trip. I don't know and why. I did just because my life situation I keep going through. But Honestly, not having any expectations or anything, this honestly turned out to be one of my best That's, experiences yeah, ever. Me too. Just because of everything we're making sense of and like putting... <laughs> I'm really hoping this night will help me get over the f being lazy because of fear and if like, it don't bro I, I, every day i need to be on I'll that just, music i'll just be a better friend and just help you you know we'll just help right. each, other. each other yeah be on that music every day i'll start going over to my mom's every saturday and mon or sunday and monday with ryan and i'll just start making music with him yeah. tell him hey man start a youtube channel me and you would just make some music do you really want to do that podcast thing hell yes dude okay like I said, my so biggest I'll make it today. my biggest I'll thing. Make, well, not we won't do it today, but I'll make it. I'll put everything in order today. My, my biggest thing with the podcast is just harm reduction and and teaching people the truth about these substances and how to and you know properly do okay. them the harm the harm reduction so you don't end up being that guy that people talk about. Oh, this dude lost his fucking mind tripping. Right. Well, no, he didn't lose his mind. He just didn't know what he was getting himself into. That's all. That's all it is. Yeah, exactly. I mean, none of us really know what, knew what we were diving ourselves into. No. But at the same time, I felt a calling towards mm -hmm. psychedelics, and yep. I know yeah, you probably same. did too. Mm-hmm. But there's a reason I started looking up LSD before I got out of the Marine Corps. It yeah. it just like all of a sudden came to me one night, and I started looking into it in mushrooms. Right. And I specifically, my mom doesn't remember the conversation, but I do, which is weird because my memory is kind of weird. I was literally out in the middle. The barracks were like this almost square, and there was this yard in the middle. 
I was sitting there smoking a cigarette telling my mom because she was all worried about me getting into drugs and shit mm -hmm. and getting back into trouble getting out of the Marine Corps. I told her, yeah, if I want to eat some mushrooms or do some LSD to expand my mind every now and then, I'm going to, but I'm not going to get into anything else hardcore. Right. Especially because if you do that, you, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you know... You know better. I got a little. I got a little heavy into the cocaine in 2015, but. I've just made one promise to myself, and I'm, I feel pretty happy. That I feel like I've done a good job so far. Is I told myself I would never do cocaine. Right. Maybe I am to cannabis. I haven't stopped smoking. No, since can't. Started. Weed's not addictive at all. No. Uh, um, psychologically, it definitely is. Psychologically, maybe mm -hmm. a little it, bit. It, but when it comes to physical withdrawals, like there's no, there's not a withdrawal from it. Yeah, you might get like angry in your mind because you don't have it, but. But that's not. Yeah. Yeah. You wanna you wanna talk about fucking withdrawal? You go talk to someone that's just coming off heroin. No, I know. So like, if I can keep my mind occupied, quit smoking as much. Yeah, cause I don't know. Keep my mind on the music. The smoking thing, if you feel like it's damaging your health, then yeah, cut it out. But if you don't, then there's no need to. I just wanted, like, for me, like I just. One hit in the morning, I'm usually good for like three, four hours, and then I'm like one more hit, and then I'm good. Of what weed? Yeah. I don't even like smoking when I wake up anymore. I don't either. Yeah. I don't know. Well, honestly, for my pearls, I'm sorry. I've just been waking up really anxious. So like, I get it's it. It's been helping me like stay extra calm. I get it. Trust me. Remember, I was there a couple of years ago where I was just waking up anxious every morning. Mm -hmm. I get it. The same pain we feel, we felt, like, individually. Wow. Because it's just... Looks like well, a bishop's hat. I was just rubbing yeah. it. I was just rubbing it like that, and he must have liked it because I let go and it just stayed up. Oh. <laughs> so fucking soft. Yeah, let's feel it. You'll appreciate it. He's like, man, what'd I do to be getting all this attention? <laughs> Buddy. Take a little nap. I know you don't like dogs, but Pi is a pretty cool dog, yeah. isn't he? I only don't like dogs because the because trauma, kid, mm -hmm. child, no. childhood trauma can do a lot to you. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I get that. And you guys seen that when I was living here, I wouldn't even leave the bedroom. Yeah, I, I felt bad about the whole Bella thing, but I thought like when I first met Bella, well, I, was you, like, I never told you how terrified I was of yeah, dogs. Yeah, dude, I was. I I guess I was trying to like. Push. Help, like, kind of push it a little bit and like show you because I thought Bella was like the perfect dog. dog to help oh, it you worked though. Your fears it worked. With. If I didn't have somebody to do that with, mm -hmm. I would still, I wouldn't feel comfortable like even being with you know with mm -hmm. right there. At least while I'm tripping, but like, it didn't even cross my mind. Yeah, you know? and he likes you too. No, yeah, I was gonna say. Because there's I, some people that come and go, he doesn't really pay much attention to, but like, really you likes. notice sometimes when we're just uh -huh. sitting there, like, he'll just come sit in front I of I feel bad sometimes because I'll just be like, you know, kind of like, get away. Because in the back of my mind, I'm still thinking, damn, you're a dog. Jeez, mm. dogs. I don't even look at him as a dog. This is my, this is my guy. This is my boy. I'm starting to this realize that just child. all animals are, you know, they're, just, they're the same soul that we are, yep. or the same thing, you know, the same mm -hmm. consciousness. It comes from the same thing. It's just not as awakened. It's not as advanced. They're not in. They're not in the human, human vessel. vessel. They can. They can think, but only so much. Mm -hmm. I was watching this one video, and it was like the difference between animals and humans. Animals like have this set programming where they only do to survive or do to. Um, there's certain things they could pick to do, but they don't really have a choice. We have choices. We could choose not to do something. You know, Pi can't choose not to eat because he doesn't feel like eating or whatever he's going to mm -hmm. eat. You know, it, it's just what it does. It's what animals, you know, it's what that soul does. Right, he can't say to us, like, oh, I don't want that for dinner. Yeah. But that's why, like, I, I really same, agree with what you at, said. At the same time, though, he's just grateful we're giving him food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Schizophrenia. Yeah, it's the third. Com I don't know why I just did that. The third commercial that's like said that, and I've called it too schizophrenia. That's all I heard out of that commercial was schizophrenia, and it, it, <laughs> it was interesting because the mindset we have right now is technically schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. Everyone would be like, "Yeah, schizophrenic mindset." It's Especially like talking about visions we 
saw in our Vision. own heads yeah, years ago see. that are now making sense. Like they're actually starting to manifest yeah, and really. If I were to happen. go see a psychiatrist, they'd be like, "Okay, we better put you on something." Well, do you want some pills to make sure you don't have these visions anymore? Like, no, no, I, I want, know, like, I want them. the visions. I'm here to help, help for you to help me understand the visions. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like what they're like, drugging all of our profits. Mm. Pretty much. What if a lot of these schizophrenics and people that we throw into nut houses, what if they were actually just supposed to be some sort of prophet? Like, Ooh. Uh, Jesus. Right, yeah, they literally could be a prophet. It literally could be that they are, they're just an evolved mind or something. Mm -hmm. They're already, the, the working's already there for the but next then, thing. But then, because they surrendered the power of themselves to somebody else, well, also, oh, we were talking about power and stuff earlier. Uh -huh. I see this in my head. Where am I trying to go with it? I see it too. Just open. What was I just saying? Help me out. Bring that back. About the um, you just bring up the power thing that we we're gonna we we're talking about power. Okay, there. so you relinquish your own power to put your power in the hands of somebody else's power. Uh -huh. Right. So basically, you're like relinquishing control over your own domain to let somebody else give you a professional but, yeah. evaluation over your domain. I don't know how to explain that better, but I see it in my head right now and it makes plenty of sense. Mm -hmm. No, I get you. Trust me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's me with every fucking day life. Yeah, this is why like, I really wish I knew the English language a little better because... I have, even just in my, like, day life, just waking life, I feel like I have, like, micro daydreams where I have these envisionments in my head. That's just your third eye. Yeah. Awakened, you, have, you have an awakened third eye, and that third eye it sees. It doesn't just, like, it sees. It sees more than what meets the eye. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I gotta start doing music every fucking day. I need to get back into music. There's I so many love things. music. For me, I'm, I'm trying to balance everything, man. Like, I don't know what to do first. And, like, I'm trying to, like, just take one thing at a time because I can't do it all. Oh, shit. And or, at least, plug. or at least I can't do it all myself. Hold on, bro. What you looking for? A plug. It's going right to be green. Right here, bro. Dope. How did that come out? I don't know. But we found it. Yep. Lost? Now it's found. And found. So glad that redose. Mm-hmm. I told you it'd be nice it'd put us right back to where we were and it, it would make it uh feel nice so then the LSD and the MDMA would come down together rather than having the MDMA come down while you're still on the LSD, because LSD it enhances all of your feelings even more. So if you're feeling like the come down of the MDMA while you're still, say, on the plateau so of, the, uh, of the LSD, LSD yeah. you might, just, you might like feel that a little yeah. more. Absolutely. I feel like this... There's no way it's... Four, I think. Four twenty-five. I mean, it's possible for them to make fast. Well, that's true. MDMA on its own... Uh, it's it almost has time restriction. Well, good conversation sober has time restriction. restriction. Right. Yeah, it does. Time goes by. Damn. So it's already been two hours since we redosed. Yeah. Damn. Holy fuck! Really? Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. I still feel like I'm staring at it. Mhm. Mm oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. Strangely, that's awesome. <clears throat> We tend to do this, guys. Let's try not to uh, lose. I don't know, cause like I, I, I fucking love you, bro. And like, let's not lose no, this connection. I don't, I don't, I don't think we'll lose ourselves. Being where we're at in our minds, like I feel like no type of, of fame or money, can really come between an actual like, bond, like yeah, friendship. Yeah. If people say, they're friends with somebody, they wouldn't do anything to fuck that person over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's that's been like my biggest issue. Like I've had so many of my 
Quote, friends, unquote, friends yeah, exactly. Just step on me and fuck me over. And I'm for like, me, it's like even Courtney has been like my backbone with a lot of that because Courtney, mm-hmm. like, she doesn't put up with that. She's like, I can see that they're just playing you because you have this. You're giving them this. Like, mm-hmm. she'll just straight up tell them and be like, get out of my house. <laughs> yeah, I have no problem vocalizing either. Man, that's where I could learn something from Courtney. <laughs> I'm starting to learn something I gotta, from Courtney. I gotta learn to be vocal like that again. I'm like I said, like I like I said, I feel like I feel like. Uh, part of this journey where I fucked up on this psychedelic journey was trying to kill my ego. You got too soft. Yeah. Ah, because that's I real became, though. I became too, too soft. soft. And then... So yeah. focused on killing my ego rather than containing it and reprogramming it and, and using learning it. how to use it for my own... Using it for, for my your good. advantage. Yeah, for the good. Because that ego is like doing its thing out running wild Mm -hmm. but once we get it contained and controlled we can force it to do good Mm -hmm. force it to you know like force it to give us that drive use that ego as your as motivation as that drive as that right ralph smart oh ralph smart changed my damn life that dude's awesome he needed that little bit of ego to be making these videos every day Uh uh-huh yeah if he didn't have his Mm -hmm. ego we wouldn't probably know him Mm-hmm. In a weird way. I can't debate if I want my hair up or down right now. I I, I just I watched I just, struggle all night. I've been, been for funny. the last for the last hour I've been like pulling it back like I'm gonna tie it up and then I don't. No, I yeah. don't. I, that's why I, I didn't yeah. say anything. Don't feel bad. I can't wait till my whole head's dreaded again though, because you can take dreads from here and here on the back part. Mm-hmm. You can pull all your hair back while having those two dreads dangling down. And then you just take those. You pull that one this way, this one this way. <laughs> loop them up and over. Boom. <laughs> Fuck yeah. There's your hair tie. <laughs> I've never had dreads. I've never even had my hair braided or anything like that before. Just Really? I, I've only either had... That's a, how I was. I never even grew my hair out I've only either had dreads. an afro or none or no hair. It's always just Damn. been like that since I was a kid. That's kind of how I was. I was always short hair... One time in high school, I grew it out long enough to, like, spike it a little bit, but it still wasn't even that long. Right. And then all of a sudden, I went right into just dreadlocks. <laughs> Never went through the actual long hair phase of, like, brushing it out and styling it. And no, right. I just went right into the dreadlocks, man. Fairy locks. I forget. I call them fairy locks. I don't want to offend anybody. Oh, <laughs> I think if you're gonna offend anybody, the first person would be yeah. Alan. <laughs> the people, the it people. Was, apparently, a lot of the people that scream cultural appropriation don't really know what cultural appropriation really means. Yeah. If they're taking culture from someone and making money off of it, okay. me wearing a dashiki is appreciating the culture because it's more colorful and vibrant Prime, than, yeah. than my own. Well, you supported whoever you got that from, too. Yeah. Like their local business. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's really that's awesome, a, actually. Yeah. Because it was just a small... I wish it was around here. Like that. It's up in Ithaca. Pardon? Wasn't it? No, I got this online. Mm. Oh, mm-hmm. and I got your other one. Because I ordered... Oh. Remember, I ordered two of them. The one was, like, real big. Big, yeah. The blue one. And the one mm-hmm. I got you was... I got it at a thrift shop, but it was uh, in the girl section. Where? But he loves it. That's where Courtney got these from me. Oh, In Courtney. the girls section. Well, I'm like, fuck yeah. I buy him skirts all the time when I see him. Yeah. Grass roots, because they'll wear them where? there. There's nothing wrong. I feel like men are just... Men are weird. But we're weird. A little bit. And... But to men, women are weird, and to women, men are weird. That's why I said if there could be, a, like, a way to bridge the both to understand one another. Like, have females try to understand why a man is so intellect, but yet have a man try, try to understand, understand why, why a woman's so emotional. Yeah, it, yep. Luckily for me, I was raised, my mom, like, I had good, a, kind of a good coming up. Like, luckily for me, which kind of didn't it didn't destroy me at a young age like i see like like courtney had a bad had a pretty rough life mm-hmm. and i can you see that her past kind of destroyed her and it kind of and that's what kind of molded her for me it was like my loneliness molded me right no i know what you mean by that you know i just wanted to connect and have connections and communicate and my mom didn't really talk my dad didn't talk nobody 
Yeah, you're just alone. Yeah, I'd see my dad, I'd be like, I don't even really know you. Mm-hmm. Yo, I hate to pull you off topic. Oh, you're good. But come and look at your kid. Oh, shit, I can't even get up. Holy fuck, holy fuck, holy fuck. Holy fuck. Woo-hoo. <laughs> I feel like people's point of envy of you is different. That's not the one I got you. Oh, no, no. That one's still upstairs. I brought this one down. Because this was the other one that uh, I ordered with this. Oh, with yeah. the red one. This mm. one was just a little big. Where do you order that? Because I'm about to get me some. There you go. You serious? Absolutely, man. You're 100% serious. I got two other ones. Every shaman needs a dashiki, oh, man. They're fucking awesome. They're That's comfortable. Sure. Right now. They're comfortable as fuck. Well, take off your other shirt. Don't be overheated. I'm sure. I'm sure you. I'm sure you've probably noticed. Oh, you're fine. I'm sure you've probably noticed every time you've come over here after we've been on a trip. I'm wearing a dashiki. Yeah, yeah. Yup. Mm-hmm. They're comfortable, man. I fucking love them. Well, I just told Alan you always wear a skirt at grassroots. Mm-hmm. And I always buy new skirts. Mm-hmm. I think this is awesome. Mesh yeah, dashiki, just dashikis are super oh comfortable gosh. because of how loose they are. Oh my god, look at yourself in the mirror. That's Aaron. dope. Yeah, go. go look got the mirror, mirror up there. If you go up a couple steps, you should be able to see your whole self. Oh yeah, that's usually what I do. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely like your style, man. It just brightened up your aura. Right, with that's the good. afro, with the afro and everything. That's that's you, bro. Now I'm you telling just need you. a freaking Thank necklace. You. Word. That right, gets you a hemp necklace to go with it. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Here, it's a little tribal right now. Like right, I don't wear that one much because it's like real big on me. I like this one's a little big too, but that one's even bigger. I don't mind. Big. Yeah, I just I love how loose fitting they are. They yeah, got too, little man. pockets in the front if you gotta put something in there. Oh, what are you grabbing? The fact that it's loose. Oh, the necklace. Mm-hmm. The fact, mm-hmm. the fact that it's like... That's what I like. It's loose. Because shirts are so confining. Mm-hmm. Shirts like... I can conf- see you wearing something like this still. So it might fit over my yeah. afro. Maybe. <laughs> it might fit over the afro. I could definitely see myself... I guess as shamans, we don't... Shamans actually dress up like females. Yeah, it technically, out. yeah. They had robes, they had dresses, mm-hmm. they had jewelry, they... They had everything, just like a woman would have. One that women nowadays have, and now Yo, it's did like you make men. these? No, Grandma gave them to me. Did she make them? No. Grandma so, just finds all the Native American stuff. Yo, stuff. she made these? Say, whoever made these are fucking dope. It's dope as shit, right. No, but you can definitely tell they're handmade, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because that's like leather hide. That's, what, that's real. It's yeah. Real. My grandma Ooh. doesn't get bullshit shit. Yeah. That's like yeah. real leather hide, man. That's real. I told you, my grandma didn't, where is it? Probably crazy. I don't even know if I showed you that one. From the right angle, it almost looks like this pendant has dreadlocks. <laughs> Hi, buddy. American, most just, of my tribes are in that. I just hate. I just hate the title of the book. I know. What oh, the Indians uh, uh, of the Northeast? Because they weren't even Indians. They, yeah, they they were, were, Columbus thought he was an Indian. So yeah, they called him Indians. The fact, fucking stupid. Yeah, that just that's a perfect example of how ignorance is spread. I might borrow this book from you. Anna. I'm not saying it's not a useful book. No, no, Grandma just mm-hmm. gave it to me because it has our tribes in it. Right. That's definitely that's useful. I just I don't like the title of it. No. Yeah. I just liked it because of like all the descriptions it talks about there. It's got our tribe. Yeah, it literally has all these different. And mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure the... if you're related to one of the tribes that was here, we were technically be related in a weird way. Yeah, well, I mean, if because we're... Cause I'm part of those native tribes too. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and it's it's definitely a, a more than pop- possible pop- that um we're like related not like kind of. Like, not family, but... Family. But, you know, yeah. Yeah. Because my, I didn't know my great-grandfather was Native American until recently, so... And my great-great-great-great-grandmother, who shares my birthday, she's all Native American. Ooh. She used to go to the church that you lived 
right across from on Gray Street. Yeah? yeah. Wow. And apparently there's a lady I can go talk to and talk to her about my Native American yeah, Native American grandmother here about. So I would love to go actually learn about my heritage. I actually yeah. found out a lot about um I like this Native American name. What is it? Potawatomi. Potawatomi. <laughs> that's that's a name for an actual tribe. Fuck yeah. Potawatomi. Yeah, because they right like now. they had like their own areas, which I definitely have to agree with. Mohawk, Oneida. You Madaga, know what's really crazy? The first Mohawk, the I found out that Seneca. the the way they came up with the Declaration of Independence and all that, they might have took to make the 50 states, they might have got that from Native Americans. Mm -hmm. The Iroquois, I think they were called, mm -hmm. they were here, those are the people here, but they were, they're the first people to do a collective tribe, mm -hmm. to work together to, um... Yep, we came here, and pretty much, and what's sad now is history books, that, whatever, history books are teaching kids that the natives just basically, out of the kindness of their hearts, said, oh, we'll get up and move out of our land and move inward, so that the uh, settlers can come in and live here. No. Exactly. That's basically the way the history books now are making it seem. Someone posted a picture last week on uh, Facebook about just that. Um, basically, the book was saying that when the settlers came in, the Native Americans agreed to a treaty that, or they signed a treaty that they would move in inland uh. to allow. Yeah. These people to to take, take their homes. Up, I'm yep. like, oh my god, that is not how it went at all. <laughs> no. I think I think it's absolutely horrible what we did to the to the Native Americans. I think it's ridiculous, and, I and think... it's it's very possible the Native Americans could have been actually at one point more advanced than than the settlers were I, when they came here. I think that I think it's, I, only, I think uh, it's the two different types of advance. I only say that because also shortly before Columbus came over, it was sometime between like twelve fifty and like fourteen hundred before Christopher Columbus came mm -hmm. over, a plague swept, swept the whole yeah. North America, the whole Americas. Yes, and got across from yeah, the Ireland. Apparently mm -hmm. it killed like ninety percent of fucking wow. Native Americans. Yeah. So if that didn't happen... If if they were at full numbers, the white man would have never been able to take over this territory. Ooh. I think that's... Honestly, I, th I think the natives were supposed to take over like the Europeans did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that was the goal of the whole. Like It's like the natives were doing something where they never lost that connection. Mm -hmm. They should have took over the world. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that should have... And then we'd live in a shamanic world. The world, yes. The world that we're supposed to live mm -hmm. in. Healing, true medicine. That's like... It's like you got these things, and we and I'm so used to calling it the ego that it's like I don't think it's the ego, because it's I because I remember when you said something about like it's we were talking about the ego, but it could have been like I remember you saying it's 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 separate from you, like the ego is like separate from us. The false ego. Yeah, but it's like no, that's true. That's true. That it'd be the false ego. Because I think our true ego is just that. Yeah, because I believe our true ego is definitely a part of us. This false ego would be what we want people to think we are. What we want people to see. See. What we want people to, yeah. Yeah, because I know me and you, I mean, we're Possibly, really... Possibly, do you think also the fal false ego could be something that makes you feel like... Worthless, yeah, too, yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. power, 150%. Yeah, 150%. Yeah, it's like I feel like that's what mine does to me. That's feel like, I think that's what Courtney's does in, to her, you know. And I think that's why she just picked up on it like a mentor or something. Because right. I guess for her, it's like she's seeing that I expand my mind with psychedelics, you guys do too. She said something to me one day that kind of broke my heart for a second. And it was like, you know, she just she's like, I don't fit in with you guys, and I'm like, I get what she means but I'm like this is maybe that's not your calling you know and that's when I guess we had that talk you know about all that she found Oprah and now she's I don't know if I told you guys she's writing a book yeah, so, no, yeah, you said that she's other. fucking writing a book that and makes it's me like, want to write a book and it's like I'm just I don't know if she really stick I'm gonna obviously I'll help her with it the whole time but write some children's books oh my god yeah. Yeah. that would be awesome I'll get yeah. if any book you ever write I'll get it published ASAP That'd be fun. I can literally get it learn to learn to turn your life lessons into stories, short little stories with fictional characters. 
Mm-hmm. That's a that's a great idea though. Mm-hmm. I can even still write my fantasy book that I've written. That's still coming true every day. You should day. definitely you should write that down. Write it all down. Courtney's book that she's writing is her life story book. That's how I feel like mine would be, my life story. She's writing down her life story. It would be like Erica's blueprint or something. I want to do the same thing eventually. Courtney said she'll help me because the thing is I'm not good at she is. Like, I'm not good at, I I don't know, like grammar and normal human things, okay? Like, I don't don't fuck with doing human things, really. Um, But she really helps me with the, I have to do human things to help humans. Kind of like how me and her are. Balance each other out. Yeah, that's really what it is. It's a balance. Because in the beginning, I think there's something that happens with men, right? Men change. There's something that clicks when it's like, it's no longer about the way a woman looks or the way whatever. You know, it's about the person, you know, and it's about the soul. And then it also comes a point where it's like, no matter how damaged that soul is, if you love them, you'll always, be there. you'll always be there for them, yeah. And I definitely feel that with Courtney. Love takes hard work, and that's something a lot of people don't want to put in effort for. Love like, does take. Like, people think it's just sex and you had a good time last night and that's it. Like, it's more than just sex. I want to see who you are. Please cry in front of me. Please tell me your fears. Please tell me your doubts, your worries, I want right. to see every part of you. That's what love does. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. has become more <coughs> like that because she used to, really into sex, used to. And I was not, and I was not. That's a Scorpio um, I used to be that way, but like, she's, recent, recently I haven't. Like, yeah, I she just, hasn't either. She hasn't either. <laughs> and yeah. So, and because she used to say, I never got how like, you know, because she, she was like, kind of grew up in the era, you know, in, in the whole brainwashing thing where, you know, men obviously, you know, like to have sex more and mm-hmm. you know, the whole the whole stereotype with that and it's like I'm not like them, them, you know, I'm not like any other person really. I like to connect. I was, like I was a big whore back in the day. The actual connection and compassion when you're actually having sex with somebody you really care about, there's it's nothing compares. I've only actually had sex with one person that I didn't fall, that I wasn't in love with already. But I've only had sex with five women, and I guess as a kid I was so preoccupied with fucking, with music. I was such, just, the way I'm preoccupied with like the psychedelic knowledge and all that, it's the same thing I did with music. I feel like most people that just run around having sex, it's just meaningless sex. It doesn't yeah. mean anything. That's what I don't like, and now sex is just what it's saying. It's a, it's yeah, it's really basically... Like, The way they sell it is ridiculous, and the way they sell it is what manipulates the minds of kids even younger and younger. Uh-huh. And it's getting even worse now with the internet and the way, like, oh, I'm sorry, that just some of the things some of these rappers talk about, I'm like, oh, Jesus. yeah, I know. You got no fucking morals, dude. Yeah, somebody sent me a thumb. And then you, there's fucking 10, 11 year old kids listening to this shit, like, First of all, why don't you got no restrictions on your little iPhone there that won't allow you to listen to this kind of content? So I guarantee you mommy and daddy wouldn't let you listen to that if you was at home. But then again, most likely, because mommy and daddy would be listening to it with them. No, yeah, they probably would. <laughs> if he's listening to it somehow, he got it from his parents. Your diet is more than just what you eat. It's everything you ingest. Yes. The diet is everything you Literally consume. Literally everything you consume, like from social media to the shows we watch, TV shows. Like, that's why um, I cut out watching TV a lot. I don't really watch much TV or anything. Like, I watch a lot of just educational videos all day long. I wake up in the morning, and I just click play on YouTube and watch a bunch of Infinite Waters, a bunch of Ty Lopez, How to Get Successful. How do you start doing it again? We do need to start doing it again, but give me a favor and have one of those days with Courtney. Just do Where you nothing. just do nothing and watch shit. Yeah. Right. Just chill. Okay. Give your brain a break. My cards will literally, like, I used to lay them out and they would tell me, give your brain a break. That's what they would literally tell me constantly. Mm-hmm. And it'd be like a lot of times after trips, like, I'm, my mind's always racing. I'm like, my mind's going to race after tonight talking about all of the ideas. And I just know my card reader was going to tell me, just relax. 
Uh -huh. Take it one day and just... One day at a time? If you ever want to watch a pretty wild movie about Jim Morrison, watch The Doors. The Doors? That was I a very... The doors. That was a very profound movie to me when I first began tripping. And is The Doors reason, an album or a we movie? Go, we don't watch that. One later. of the reasons why is I ate a quarter... And this was only like my second or third time tripping. I ate a quarter of mushrooms alone at my mom. And I was up in my tiny little room, which is like, really my small. room is tiny. Like yeah, a closet. Mom, oh, like damn. It's, yeah. It's basically a It closet. was basically an add-on for my baby brother when he was born, my little brother Chubbs. Because me and Andy were in the one room, but then they had to get a, a separate room. So they added on to the house. So it's pretty pretty small. Right. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Okay, I'm back to it. Um, so I ate these mushrooms and my brother gave me the fucking The Doors DVD because he knows I was getting into The Doors and I really like The Doors music. So I'm watching this fucking movie and by the time this movie's over, I had about convinced myself I was Jim Morrison in a past life. I'm like, this dude is me. It's where this dude screams me. But I felt that even tripping with you in Columbia Street. <laughs> Like in a weird way. When did he and die? I, I, I did he die? Was, was he dead? Family. Oh yeah, he died a while ago. How, oh, yeah, how much he, a while ago? How many years? Like before, way, way well before, before, before any I was of us born. Were in, so that's possible. Back then. in the 70s. He was part of the 27 club. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's wild. It's a heart attack, but he's 27. Right. Well, heart attack. Somebody poisoned him. We're 28 now, bro, so that's not the case. Right, day. right. <laughs> no, but yeah, that, I, I just think that's a really, really good movie about... They do a good job depicting how much of an asshole Jim was. Jim what? was an asshole. I thought he was, like, kind of not, though. He was I, a I, fucking asshole. I see such, most people that are I assholes. See conflicting articles Jim was about fucked it. in the head. Yeah, I was about to say most people. To be completely honest. But I, we all are, though, a little bit. But. He fucking locked Pam in a closet and lit it on fire. <laughs> was that what the fuck? Else? That really happened. Jesus. Oh, my God. Yeah, Jim was a little fucked in the head. He was a very smart man. And I like what, he's, what he talks about. But he was also a little fucked in the head. Well, he... Because of his ideas, he went beyond them. Mm -hmm. He didn't need to push his ideas the way he needed to. I didn't think he was that fucked up. I see conflicting things about him. Well, I've I've done a lot of looking into him, and obviously being uh, somebody I kind of look up to, Five, his, yeah. his style of music, just because like it, it was just different. The stuff he talked about, his, the way he put his lyrics together, just They're fucking beautiful. yeah. Uh -huh. Makes me almost want to put on a fucking door song. This could be a good one. Absolutely upbeat. Please. You were supposed to stay up all night. We agreed, no naps. <laughs> he was also supposed to stay in there all night, but since yeah. we didn't get crazy tranced out, we let him let him come in. I took an hour of meditation. That's not bad. I guess you want to know why? Really I took that meditation though to to um to let go of uh, something before I went into this experience. I didn't want that pain holding me back, like with my daughter and all that. I didn't want that holding me back from having from having an experience. A good time. So it's like I'm gonna use tonight's knowledge, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the fact that. We are creators, and I am the creator, and I'm going to use that to make sure my daughter's safe. And it's just as simple as that. I, I can't cry any more tears about it, because that's not going to help me right now. I will, I will just throw this out there so you know heart to heart that I was prepared to see you cry. So uh -huh. I can hold you. I know. Tell you that. I know you guys were. And that's really why I was honestly, I was prepared to come over here and just cry my goddamn eyes. But I've done that for, for weeks so now. And you can't do it yeah, it's like I think I let it. I think I let it all out. I think I let it out, and I'm like, okay, I let out the mess. I miss her. Now, what can I do? Just now, 
main thing I do it is I'm trying to write about the upbeat. But I'm trying to is, plan things. This is one of my favorite Doors songs. It's called The End. Damn, I still can't really fucking see. It's hard to no, read things. like the things are like. Yeah. yeah. This one's all right. You just all their things. Oh no, they got some upbeat songs. They do. L.A. Woman and Roadhouse Blues. Oh yeah, that one. Oh yeah. I love the computer. But they play this song in the movie, because in the movie I was telling you about, there's a scene where they eat peyote in the desert. Oh shit. Yeah. The the whole the whole band, the Doors. Jim took. What? Jim took them. (laughs) On an experience and showed them how to open their minds so they could manifest. Fucking word. And that's how they became a band. That's why. Wow, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Like they were already like practicing and stuff before that, but Jim kept telling them, "We got to take it deeper." Mm-hmm. Well, now you're together, you have a connection with each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Band are somehow like in sync with each other. Yeah. So like they already like with each other while tripping and then you trying to play music with each other. So it's just gonna be fun. Oh, right. You love it like that, though. Fuck yeah. He's like, man, I don't know what these guys do on those nights they lock me in there, but they sure are friendly after they let me out. <laughs> and free desperately in need of some stranger's hand. Yeah, time's probably off for him. Like, what's going on? I thought I was going to feel tired, but I don't know why. You can't sleep on... Nah, yeah, there's no sleeping on MDMA. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, like, naturally tired, like, all the fucking time. Like, like I, really, I know I don't rest enough. <laughs> it really makes me wonder, like, that first that first night me and you did mushrooms together, when you were still with Billy. It makes me wonder if he actually went in that room and fell asleep, or if he just laid there and held the whole, held the whole night. He held the whole night. He didn't even, he didn't, didn't sleep? Trust me, I went in there and checked on him a couple times. He was just in hell? Pretty much. I always gave him all the spores. Yeah, our and friend. Kid, kids never tripped before. He did oh, mushrooms once before and they weren't even good mushrooms because I seen the bag and then I watched him eat it. <laughs> yeah, so then we get some good mushrooms and this kid just takes a whole bunch of fucking spores and dumps it in this kid's mouth. Like. And then he has a ride of his lifetime. Yeah. Jesus. And it caused me a wild chicken thing. <laughs> Thanks. A wild because we do mushrooms. <laughs> They're wild for not. Yeah. <laughs> right. I just think he had an experience that he couldn't understand. <laughs> and if he would have just sat with us, he would have yeah. enjoyed it more. Right. <laughs> I think when you have an experience you don't understand, it's better to talk about it. Because mm-hmm. then maybe. Somebody can spark something. They it can, can bring some understanding to, to the it. situation. Yeah. You never. If you don't have an understanding, you're not going to get an understanding by sitting there and telling yourself, "I don't have an understanding." Mm-hmm. Don't remember what I was talking about before that, but it, but I knew it made sense to <laughs> the, the, the revenant conversation. I mean, I know that happens a lot on like even mushrooms and LSD, but mm-hmm. I feel like it's the worst on MDMA. Right. The most I've seen that happen to for me is on um, shrooms. Really? On shrooms, like I get this, I get this weird mental fog on shrooms. Like LSD is so mentally clear, mm-hmm. but shrooms for some reason I get this mental fog, like an alcohol, an alcoholicness about. I know it. what you're saying. Intoxication. I've had, I've, had, I've had that mental fog before. When you. If, if I'm not mistaken, that mental fog, you almost feel like you're not in control of it either. Yeah. Where with LSD, like, I feel like you're completely in control of getting your mind clear and into a good mm-hmm. mindset. Obviously, if they're not, uh, I don't even know, we can't really call ourselves professionals, but it's like, I mean, at this point, yeah, we are. But, you know, people that are diving into their own minds, they don't realize what they're diving into. I feel like a lot of people just misuse 
the psychedelics because one, it's a taboo now. It's like becoming a cool thing for it's, it's now becoming a trend to be woke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to be woke and to do these drugs when I feel like ninety percent of people aren't getting real LSD. They're getting other shit research chemicals. And they're really only dropping as a fun party type thing. Yeah. And they're completely Yeah, and they're completely missing out I mean, on you the whole other aspect. You should have seen all the trip reports I went through, you know, before I you know, we candy flipped. And most of them, all of them, were like at raves and mm-hmm. and like party scenes, and they were just talking about how they mixed it with you know, and then they wanted to start mixing it with things as the day went on and like as the night went on, and mm-hmm. I'm like these people are just trying to. There's some people that can use psychedelics and use this to just feel like get mm-hmm. that get that get that sense of pleasure or that sense of. Uh, they're probably looking for a high. You're not going to get a high from psychedelics, but I mean, some people would misinterpret it as a high. Well, I think they look at psychedelics too as like how many shots can you get, how many hits can you get, whatever. It's not like that, yeah. It's like, show me, show me you taking one hit and learning what you would have learned if you took nine hits. Exactly. And I'll be impressed, I'll be proud of you. Yeah. Like, I'll be happy for you. Because less is always better. That goes with every substance. That's why usually I only take one hit at a time now. Burn. <coughs> oh my god, that tastes so good. <coughs> Holy moly. I just got my eyes doing the thing. Doing the thing, yep. <laughs> the euphoric flutters. Alright, I gotta put something more upbeat back on. Yes, yes. And he looked inside. Father, yes, son, I want to kill you. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, like, his whole poem from that point on. <laughs> he took a face from the ancient gallery and he walked on down the hall. It's like me with Terrence when kind of Crony really like, like, really? Did you listen to this again? And I'll be just mouthing Terrence with Terrence. It's like, yeah, I've, I've seen this, this conversation before a couple hundred times. <laughs> this, I don't hey. know if you've ever heard of Infected Mushrooms. They did no. two CDs where they took Doors songs and made them into trance songs. Mm. This is one of them. So this is Hello, I Love You. The Infected Mushrooms remix, but it has the original Doors like singing and guitar parts in it still. Oh yeah, we'll have a second. That shit tasted so delicious. Uh It felt so good. Blind to every eye she meets. You know what makes my voice sound worse? Fear. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. When sometimes, like, you'll be going to hit a note, and then, like, yep, you'll hit it real bad because your fear takes over where you don't want to fuck it up or you're afraid you'll sound stupid. You know, it's so funny that you say that. I just laughed at myself because I don't know why you guys have never heard me sing here because I'm scared. I'm scared mm-hmm. to sing in front of people. I know I have a great singing voice. I, 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 I can play you my song where I sung on, but Everybody doing that live in front of you guys is kind of scary. You know, mm-hmm. but that's why I used to love doing live shows. I performed live twice when I was in Iraq. It's awesome. Once on Camp Baharia, once on Camp Ramadi. <laughs> that's dope. Doing my own raps. Word. And I literally got props from like my captain, my gunnery sergeant, my fucking staff sergeant, my lieutenant, like all my higher ups, who mm-hmm. I thought were just gonna talk shit, mm-hmm. were actually like, damn dude, you've got some skill. Huh. I'm like, word, I appreciate that. Like, these are my own lyrics. Like, right. put my heart into that shit. Real shit. And the one time I did it in Ramadi, I literally fucked up, had to restart, 
fucked up again. And I told the dude, I said, yo, just give me 15 minutes, I'll be back here. Because it, it was a song I had just written not too not too long ago. So mm-hmm. it was like, I was trying to remember the lyrics. Oh my, yo, I did that. When I performed at the Bistro, mm-hmm. um, I actually took, I took a mushroom. Um, I actually think I took, I was planning on microdosing. I took a gram though. I didn't really weigh it, but I asked him, it was about a gram from the experience I had. So when I got there to perform on fucking stage, the shroom kicked in. I was like, Jesus. But I felt like I was in the zone. There's something about being on stage though. The stage presence thing. It's like that feeling when you're on stage and everyone's looking at you, you're just in the zone. You forget that you're singing to a crowd and you're just singing to, in yourself in the shower basically. And well, it's not even, nece- when it, for me, it's like, it's not necessarily I have to think about it. It's the same thing with the psychedelic, where that's why I think I'm really into music, because music has always made me feel what psychedelics make me feel, like the way that's connected. And like, I, I was, I was an only child, so I used to rap and rap and rap from 11 years old up until, up until I had my daughter. Like, that's all I did was rap, rap, and wanted to be a famous rapper, and I dedicated my life to that. But then... Bad decisions got me locked up, rent hanging around the crowd, but I just gotta get back to making music again. Cause I still have that passion for music. music. I've always had a passion for music, man. My whole life I've loved music. Me too. And like I th- I always thought other people like loved music that much, but I'm like, No. Mm-hmm. Nah, people don't yeah, that's what I've noticed. I just too. love listening to it. Mm-hmm. Like, sound Sound to when me it hits is your so soothing. Mm-hmm. Like, I love music, but, like, I don't love it as much as you guys. Like, I'm okay going to sit out in the woods and just listening to the birds. Right. Oh, don't get me wrong. I love that, too, I but... Love... No, me, too. But a oh, lot of I times... Love my, I love my sound. A lot of times when I go uh, out in nature, I do bring my phone. So, like, I do have music playing, and some, but there are times where I'm like, okay, I'm take this time to meditate. So I'll sit down, turn everything off, and just sit there and meditate and hear the birds, you hear the trees, you, hear, you start to hear things around you, you hear the river flowing... I have like a certain songs that I li- that I listen to. I don't listen to like positive vibe songs, I guess. Like a lot of the songs I listen to now don't have words in them. Yeah. And if they do, they're like Upbeat. chopped or, or like or, you know, okay, okay, yeah. kind of like remixed or something. I this used to be song. my shit, bro. I just love this song. <coughs> Let me see if I can sing to it. If I grow some balls, I'd sing with you. Oh, dude. <laughs> I was seven years old, my mama told me, go make yourself some friends or you'll be lonely. I still got too much nerve in my voice. I just, bro, as soon as I break it, I'd be fine. It was a big, big world, but we thought we were bigger. Pushing each other to the limits, we were learning quicker. By 11, smoking herb and drinking burning liquor. I still hear that nervous in my voice, though. It was out for a second, though. Because I used to record music. I used to record so many people's music. Mm-hmm. So, like, I know a lot about, like, that shakiness in your voice. Mm-hmm. But once that shakiness is gone, you have that immense confidence in mm-hmm. what you're saying. It'll be the shit no matter what you say. Mm-hmm. Like my daddy before me so I started writing writing songs I started writing stories And you know who else I always told I was going to make it in music? Corporal McClure He's the one that died in a car accident a couple years ago in West Virginia I had one one corporal in the Marine Corps that actually like got to me on like a a heart-to-heart connection and it's sad, I never got to see him after I got out. Like, I was actually literally planning to see him. And he died in a car accident. I was like, oh my god, that sucks. Because he was talking to me about mushrooms and LSD and about how he was just becoming Ooh. open to it. Yeah. So I was very interested in meeting up with him and talking right, to him, right. you know. Once I was 20 years old no, I'm still That's not. all I gotta do is speak I'm up and singing 30 years old, songs of pain. 
Roman. But I have a good idea. That's going to be us soon, though, too. Senior is saying, traveling around the world, we're still roaming. Because I never had ideas to really travel until I met you guys. You know, like, because my traveling for me was smoking DMT and literally leaving this dimension to try to whatever. That was my traveling. That was my only vacation. Yeah, right, yeah. just as just as me and her had the pleasure of traveling America, you got to travel another dimension. <laughs> like you traveled a place that not every human being even knows exists. Right, it's so crazy. Everybody I, in the world knows America exists. That's what we were traveling. <laughs> There's a lot of people that don't even know that place exists where you were. Right. But I, I don't know. I no, think, but I definitely see what you're saying, I think too, about they, wanting to travel the actual, yeah. this world. And I guess for me, it's like, because I've traveled that world, and it's like, I, I guess from DMT, I know things I can't say in English to you, mm -hmm. to, to even, even though you guys would be the most, the only people that would understand it, I can't say it. That's, that's what I because, meant, that's what I meant earlier when I'm like, I can only put like 10% of my thoughts from these experiences into words. Yeah. Because we're always thinking the same shit. I know. <laughs> but you just have way better words. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm a smooth talker. Me too, it's me too. And uh, what's funny is like wanting to do music, singing, whatever. In 11th grade, I had a teacher, a history teacher. I thought she was always picking on me because she was always making me read. Right. And she knew I didn't read too well. Like, reading out loud, I was sl a little slow. Mm -hmm. Kind of like you could hear the nervousness in my voice. But the reason she chose me to read is because she said the tone of my voice, the frequency it was at, she said, you have a voice that people just... It's easier to listen to. Yeah. I'm like, okay. It's a very unique voice that's easy to listen to. Um, yeah, because if Terrence, it's Terrence, it's, yeah, if Terrence McKenna had a different voice but the same words, he might not be known by yeah, all of he us. Yeah, he just he wouldn't be the same. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Man, right. I'm fucking out of my mind right now. I just went to unscrew the grinder just to get a hit of weed, and I'm like, nah, dude, it's packed in the bomb over here. What are you doing? Right. <laughs> just get a hit, man. Get your. You're losing it, bro. Get your shit together. <laughs> You're losing your fucking mind. You're losing your mind. That's the thing. I feel like I know I could be an actor too. I think you could. You could probably. And you'd have to teach me because I don't know how to be an. How to facial expressions, all that. I just know what I feel, so I'm showing it. I think that's why today I was. <laughs> that's, I think that's why today I was doing that weird thing with my uh -huh. face. Jim Carrey used to do that in the mirror, though. Like mm -hmm. he said, he used to do that all the time in the mirror. But my eyes don't change. My face changes, but my eyes don't. Because that's. Ooh, that's a good idea, because some people say the eyes are the gateway to the soul. Mm -hmm. I think we might actually have our same facial structure, because it's like... Possible. You know, because like your it's facial structure seems... It's possible that any time so we're... It's, po it's possible that any time we're reincarnated, we're actually reincarnated back into the same DNA we were before. Ooh. Maybe that, not like first or second closely related, but you still have... That that type of blood line or something like, like you're, you're in that DNA. Like it could be possible that your great 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 grandchild is actually you. Yeah. That came back. Yeah. About to put on some bass nectar. Yeah. Wake up. We need to make money. Sadly. <laughs> Sadly, yeah, I gotta do something today. But it's not gonna be sadly anymore, cause it's like, no, it's gonna be making money happily, cause we're Fuck doing yeah. we're doing what we want to do. Mm -hmm. I thought I don't think I think 
I don't think we should feel bad for for making money or for getting. If we get rich, we no. get rich. I don't. As long as you know we have and I good think that intentions. Was part of my part of my downfall before is like trying to be so conscious. I feel like I was trying to make myself like this perfect being, and I thought to myself like. Oh well, if I'm conscious and awake, then I have like, to be like, like this. I have to be like Jesus or like Buddha. Yeah. And I was trying to put myself up on that high pedestal, and it's like, damn, I can't, I can't be like them. I'm not them. I'm me. Yeah, you're not, you're not them. You're not, you're not Buddha. You're not gonna sit there for for years yeah. and meditate next to a tree. You know, but if some woke people got into some money, it'd probably be a good thing. I think it'd be an amazing thing. Mm-hmm. There are some billionaires that are pretty yeah. woke. Yeah, the, that, that one billion things with their money. That one billionaire guy um, who's like trying to um, help with, prevent disease, like with his new. Oh, uh, see, there's this other billionaire who bought this huge, huge fucking chunk of land in the Amazon, and I think he paid like a billion dollars for point, it. Four point one billion dollars. He paid his Jesus. own money. Four point one billion dollars. For this land, just so these companies wouldn't go in and destroy it. Dude, that is so fucking awesome. Because things like that, I wish we could do. You know, like, I wish we had more power to be like, a, you're not going to treat the natives like this anymore. Enough is right. enough. You're not going to treat the people like this anymore. Enough is enough. Mm -hmm. But we're not in a position of power ourselves. Not yet. Not yet, exactly. My issue has been not, is not giving up. Like, and I, not being corrupted by the money either. Yeah, because no, people cause... people say money corrupts, and it's like I think our society is what corrupts. Mm. Money is just money. Money is just money. We make it's it whatever just, it is. It's just a piece of paper yeah. that we trade for goods. Yep, that's all it is. So it's all that it should be treated as. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't because yeah, you need money to survive. But I've I've tried to live with the example. I don't really need much to survive at all. Mm -hmm. I've. I'm always with so little money, it's crazy. And like... I've fluctuated my whole life where I'll go to having thousands saved up to back down to nothing. <laughs> I wish I like, caught on saving earlier at a young age. Yeah, yeah. Um, I started learning to save real good uh, when I got out of the Marine Corps. Where? It wasn't until... God damn, now I'm actually thinking about it. It wasn't until like just about two years ago that I actually got good at saving money. Right. It was right before we traveled the country. <laughs> Instead of just going and blowing my money, I started saving it. Uh. And I mean, luckily I was living in my mom's basement so I didn't have to pay rent. Yeah. But still in four months we were basically able to manifest traveling the whole country. Right. Something we had talked about. And then I fucking, and then it manifested. She gets fired from her job. I quit the job, and then come to find out, I just make way more money just sitting home selling weed. Right. Because that's when I went from picking up a QT to a half pound to a pound, mm -hmm. and I did the shit real quick. <laughs> did way too much cocaine on the way too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's when we had too many people just coming and going. Cause I was getting and obviously I was giving out free cocaine, free weed. Of course people were coming by. Right. He was giving out free cocaine. Who the yeah. fuck does that? <laughs> I've never... Me, because I like fucking sharing my drugs with people. I don't want to be the only one high. Yeah. Right. It's not fun. Cocaine's a social thing. Here, fucking do a line. Let's talk. Conversate. <laughs> <coughs> I don't know if I'll ever do drugs like that. Because I, I don't know if whether to... I don't like to call it a drug because cocaine still is a... I think it's a natural molecule from the coca plant. But... Cocaine's a good time if you get some good stuff. Yeah, I, I just know how... Of a, I, I know how such of an addictive personality I have. Because we, we, me and her, did coke a couple times while you and Courtney lived here. But the one night, like, I remember specifically, like, poking my head in your room with a big smile on my face. I was like... Yeah, coke? <laughs> yeah, I remember that yep, too. Yep, that stuff was pretty good. But sadly, I would have. That was about the only good stuff we've gotten since like coming back from Oregon. Yeah, that's yeah. like a good one. Dude. Yeah, like, it's just a turn off. It's a turn off and a waste of money when you get shitty coke. Uh, damn. Yeah, yeah I can imagine. So your best bet would probably be. Dark. Yeah. Grams, yeah, grams of pure cocaine. 
that shit literally should last you six months. Yeah, if you use that but they're like, right. they're like three hundred dollars. But around here, people that do hundred a gram, some people do hundred and twenty a gram. Oh, I'm losing my mind. What, what was that? What was it talking about? I'm losing my mind. Said a, where was my mind? Cocaine. Okay. Okay, Start yeah. Rob. So, okay, yeah, all that. Basically, man. you buying one gram of pure cocaine for $300, it would probably cost you about that much for an eight ball around here. But when you take all the cut out of it, there's probably not even a gram of pure cocaine. cocaine in it. Yeah, it's not even. That's the issue with the drug game, man. It's mm-hmm. like. And this is why the war on drugs did nothing but make the situation worse. Yeah. Absolutely. Because when they'd start, when they'd have a war on drugs, they don't educate people on why they're saying no and why mm-hmm. they're doing these things because they don't have a good reason besides they're scared. They're mm-hmm. just basically telling us don't touch the That's what so pain. true. That's so yeah. true. They don't have a reason for us to be scared of much or like to tell us not to do LSD. Oh, why shouldn't I do LSD? Well, they don't have, they don't have, will, yeah. Will it like, make my heart freak out or like shut my liver down well no it can make you see things i was about to say they'll, they'll about say life. it can it can make you see things you can possibly lose your mind yeah and, because that's usually what they they say and it's like hallucinations and losing your mind and frying your brain hallucinations no offense you know what i think i'm really getting the idea of where this hallucinations coming from no offense to most of these people they're taking way too fucking much, they can't even see what's happening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why they're hallucinating. Their visuals are so much, they think they're seeing Well, nah, well, I've had, uh, from, when I was just doing D- DMT, That's like, when I did DMT, like, two weeks, so I did, like, two weeks in a row, right? I blasted every single day for, like, two fucking weeks. Only time I've ever done that, so I'll never do it again. But, like, fuck, I forgot where I was going with that. Uh, blasting, like, two weeks straight. What did you say? Because it reminded me... I guess my more, I don't know what I was going to say, but I know I was going to say that... Something about... Yeah, I don't know. MDMA, man. Nope. 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 I mean, that even happens with mushrooms and LSD. Everyone will be talking, and everyone's like, yo, what was you just talking about? Like, I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> I feel it's almost because your mind is accelerated. Ooh. You're thinking and processing so much more. Like, something you were just thinking about a minute ago, you almost, like, can't even bring it in because you're processing so mm-hmm. much more. I fucking love this album. I do, too. Jesus, this is awesome. What is this? The Fuck album's yeah. called Unlimited. Unlimited. Um, I like this song in the... It came out in... in it came out in 2016. This is their whole album, so it'll be nothing but bass nectar playing right. for the next hour. See, I like this, because this is, like, not as wild and crazy as dubstep. Mm-hmm. I like chill, like... I, I listen to a lot I prefer, of show stuff. Yeah, too. I prefer stuff that sounds like this. Me too. Trippy, but like. Upbeat. But still upbeat, yeah. Uplifting, but like not, not wild. Yeah. Not trippy and slow, but not, you know, but just the right speed. Just the, Right. I like the instruments they choose. Oh, this is my favorite song on the album, too. It's called Music is the Drug. Ooh. Yeah. Yes, the fuck it is. Just listen to this. Yeah, turn it up. This is. I don't know what this one is. I gotta go pee, so... You'd be safe. I will. <coughs> I like that wet-sounding effect on that. But you messing with the not the knobs and all those mm-hmm. things on the on the instruments, you can kind of... Because I don't know, like... How to use the wet thing because you can have wet sounds dry mm-hmm. sounds i don't know anything about that i just know frequencies <laughs> like mm-hmm. 
That's kind of what I do. I'm just like dragging shit around and I just hear it and I'm like, okay, yeah. I think that's how I want it. If I turn something and it starts to sound worse, I'm like, yeah, we'll turn it back. Right. Well, that's how they had to do it, you know, before technology, really. See, I feel like this has both an EDM and almost like a hip-hop flow to it. Mm-hmm. Fucking Devin wanted me to um, live chat him tonight. He was like, if you get a uh, uh, Wi-Fi over there, he's like, live chat me. I just want to see how you're doing, bro. <laughs> I've been talking to Devin lately. <coughs> You'll have to explain to him that when you're in the experience, it's hard to do things like that. Yeah. And when you're not just like, like, like we talk about most people just trip to trip. They don't get into the experience. Drugs are just tools, man. That's all they are. They can be used, or they can... They can be abused. Yeah. Right. I think they abuse them every day. Every time they tell somebody here, take this antidepressant. Mm -hmm. Every time they tell somebody here, you know, we're only going to give you guys Advil to clear your headaches. And it's like, okay, so we got to take acetaminophen, which is a poison, to our liver. Yeah, I feel like if I was a real psychologist, the last thing I'd want to do is go ahead and try to prescribe somebody a fucking benzo. My yeah. goal, my goal, my goal would be not to just prescribe them a medicine that helps, but actually do my fucking job to help them understand what they're going through. Right, because if so it's I don't, job. so I don't have to prescribe them a pill that can make them worse in the long exactly. run. Exactly. You know, maybe you can just, you know, not drug them up and just talk to them. No, I just want to look at it. I do weird shit when I'm rolling. I don't know why. Like, I just do. Yo, it's so crazy that a bunch of gangsters used to come over and record music at my house, in my studio, all on Molly. Really? Most, well, most of them they... probably weren't even on real Molly. I was, cause I, I was thinking that because there's no way in hell what they couldn't have. Because, I don't know, they're just too... A lot of the Molly out there nowadays is either methalone or butylone. Because there was which, no connection with him. Which you know? they kind of give you a slight euphoric feeling, but it doesn't have the mental state of MDMA. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, like, God, the methalone and butylone, it's almost like with MDMA, you take it and then it starts rising, rising, mm-hmm. rising, you get there. With this stuff, it's like it rises and then just gets right here and stops. It's a fucking It's a cock tease. <laughs> yeah, because when it first starts to kick, you're like, ooh, I'm about to roll hard. It's gonna do it. Yeah. And then it just stops. And then it just, like, stops right there, and that's all you feel. Even with higher doses, we didn't feel anything greater. See, so having this experience... Yeah. Having this experience makes me think the MDA that I had was an MDA. It's possible it could have been, though, because MDA is different from MDMA. Really? It's more psychedelic. Okay. It'll have more time dilation rather than time restriction. More visuals and even more euphoria. Right. Actually, here in about here in about two more hours, your visuals might actually get even stronger. That's That's only because the MDMA in your system now, your body's going to convert it to MDA, oh. and MDA is more visual than MDMA. So that's why when you're coming down off MDMA. You actually have like more visuals like when you're coming down than you do while you're on the full plateau. I kind of wish that I would have tried it in- internally, like ingesting it, but at the same time, I don't because I knew nothing about this shit. And, and the dude I was getting it from, he's not a trusted source. Right. I don't really trust anybody. I don't trust anybody. when it comes to since 2012. For the most part, we've tried to be very high maintenance with our drugs. Yeah. <laughs> That's why, like. 
Yeah, I don't mm-hmm. need to use that term, but Timothy why Leary. Other people's you know what Timothy Leary said? Huh. He said the best thing you can do about drugs is find yourself a good dealer. Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Fucking right. Because that is the best thing you can do about drugs. Drugs. Find yep. yourself a good dealer so you don't get hurt. That's real. Yeah. If you're gonna do them, you're gonna do them. Ain't nobody gonna nobody's stop you. Nobody's gonna from stop you no matter it. what. Yep. Right. I'm almost excited for those Mormons to come back on Saturday. Like, hey guys, what's so up? So I can tell them, you know, God's power lives within you. They might think I'm crazy <laughs> if I start spouting off about how I talk to God. And it's just. Well, that's what I used to tell them. When I was but here's the thing, though. And they here's, see if I was on drugs. Yeah, here's no. here's the thing. If I start <laughs> if I start telling these dudes some of my stories about how I'm speaking to God and Jesus and. How they want me to teach humans through sound and music and this and that they'd probably think holy fuck this guy's a nutcase mm-hmm. but literally the book they're coming to my doorstep with it's the same says the same, same exact type thing. shit from a guy from a, some random from guys a, from a guy joe who's, smith or whatever yeah and, something smith and it's just it's funny it's funny how that that works though and only he saw the books nobody else actually ever saw what these the true gospel of God said only he could see him and then usually, after he's like a af- that goes and then like, like after the Book of Mormon was written he like destroyed the something to wherever he got the knowledge from sounds like they were just trying to hide a lot of shit they're just trying to keep something mm-hmm. and trying to just you know because it's easier to brainwash people if they can't if you, you basically tell them you can't search for other options I'm like convinced in my soul because like I like experience I feel like I saw the real story of Jesus Christ and Mary Mm. Now, I'm not saying what I experienced is the truth, but it felt like the truth. And it felt like he was just nothing but a shaman like us. Mm -hmm. He just took psychedelics. Mm -hmm. And nothing against Mary, but I think what she was, she just cared because there were any men that needed like a shoulder to cry. Yeah. She was just there for equally. Mm hmm. Yeah, I only brought this over because there's a couple things. I don't know how you can read right now, bro. I know. Barely. I give him credit half the time. I still don't. Uh, I still don't even know how he got the camera to work on that holy shit video. Holy shit! That was a fucking dope video. That was, Part of this Book of Mormon is almost like. Oh, that's like, the Book of Mormon. Yeah, yeah. The dude wanted me to read through this before he came back on Saturday. Yeah, I'm I just trying to shit. Yeah, I'm trying to just do a quick overview, but it it keeps talking about how God chooses a prophet and the prophet teaches the gospel and leads the people. <laughs> but it's like Is that really what it says about? Yeah. It's that's pretty much what it's like saying and that and this and that, that's, that this Smith dude like He's the prophet. Was, his, yeah, he was the, the prophet chose to fucking It's always somebody's chosen. Who the fuck yeah. chose him? Yeah. <laughs> I chose myself. You know, maybe he just took some mushrooms. He chose to go eat those mushrooms. Yeah. That everyone was saying they're poisonous. Don't eat. See, that's where I. That's why I meant by like possessive too. Like I was telling some church people, like something like the Mormons when I was sixteen. Like I feel this power inside of me. Like I feel like I'm the one. I feel like I'm supposed to save the men. But they'll tell you you're crazy. But then their whole book is fucking is about a man who felt just kind of the same thing. Who said he interacted with spirits. Mm -hmm. Or they'll tell you, oh, the spirits you saw are demons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then why are they teaching me about love? (laughs) Explain that. Yeah, oh, oh, they're just trying to disguise you to lure you in with love and, and, you know, manipulate you. That's exactly, yeah. That's exactly what it is. That's the biggest thing religion does is put fear into people. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't live a good life, you're going to burn in hell. You don't know what's funny? I think that's why, a lot of times, why we have so much fear. Like in life, uh huh. Because it, we don't want to burn in hell. Yeah, it's we're that, afraid of, afraid of actually letting loose and being a fucking human. Yeah, being an actual human. Yeah, we're scared. You know, we're sit, fear is drilled in us before we're even born. It's drilled in our parents to make mm-hmm. sure that our parents raise us a certain way, or society will call CPS, take their kids away, mm-hmm. or do all that. And then, how many parents also want to live through their kids? Oh, my son went to Harvard. Right. Yeah. Right. So when you decide, hey. I'm not going that route. It disappoints a lot of parents. Now, my parents, my my parents at least, you know, my dad was the one that was like, 
oh, you either fucking join the military, get a job, or fucking go to college. Right. That's well, I mean, how most parents are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, most parents just want their kids to be them. You know, they want to yep. be, uh, you know, if you're, if, especially a dad wants his son to be like him. You know, and... Well, also, our, our parents' generation, their parents were kind of fucked up. Oh, yes, they way were. Way too harsh on them. Yeah, way too harsh. That's real. So, they're trying to carry over into the next generation of, like, okay, how how would my parents be raising my child? Mm-hmm. Like, no, this is dangerous thinking. Yeah, really it's your dangerous. child. You raise it how you, raise you it want. Your, yeah. Don't raise it like your parents raised you. That's why you have problems. That's why we're, yeah, that's why we're in the <laughs> predicament we're in. <laughs> Because I definitely think children are the future. Mm-hmm. If we can... The natives believe that they learn everything about the other realms from, through their children. Because they just came from the other realms. That's, that's kind of how I learned. So Vea, they, like they I came, learned... They just came from the pure state that you could ever imagine. Yeah, they, yeah. Like when I first started doing DMT, Vea was too. And it made me, after that first DMT experience, it made me look at her a different way. I was like, I now understand what you are, and I gotta do. I gotta take care of you. Do something about that. Children, and like, they're a beautiful thing. They yeah. Really, are. really, really complicated. It's a lot more complicated than most people think, oh, because the me, complications aren't what you think they are. Trust that, me, I know all the hassles that uh, come with. Yeah. I basically help break my problems. Because for me, it's like a, it's like a lifelong. Yeah, I'm assigned my life away for this child, and so this child can have a good life, and my, every breathing moment will be dedicated to this child living a better moment than I did. Yeah, but what's beautiful is that I know in her heart she knows what she wants. I know, I know. So that takes the trust that you're doing I know. And the only reason that, the only reason I guess I've been crying about it and all that is because I'm worried about her, you know, because I'm worried about is she safe? Trust Does she have anyone to talk to? Yeah. Does she have anyone to tuck her in, in at night? Does she have anyone to, you know, and I, so I worry like how she... Does she have a safe place to vent herself in? And you're her father. Yeah. Her. Yo, this Joseph Smith dude must have been tripping on a lot of good shit to have all these beings appear. Oh, really? Where? Well, he's had... Well, see if you can see any pictures of plants. Well, like right here, it says in 1829, Joseph Smith received the same priesthood authority that Jesus Christ had given to his apostles, meaning he was given the godly authority to go and teach. Uh, You have to have authority to teach. Yeah. You have to be given it. Mm Mm-hmm. John the Baptist, who baptized Jesus, (laughs) appeared to Joseph Smith and conferred on him the Aaronic priesthood. So now all of a sudden, John John the Baptist had to come down and bestow upon him some priesthood so that he could go and teach. That's, so That's the other thing. They make it seem like, oh, you have to be a chosen one to teach. Like, no, we're all the, we're all the chosen ones. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel. Like... Just because I said religion I doesn't like want you. One, religion. No, we know. Yeah. yeah. Religion we are doesn't you. want you. Yeah. Religion doesn't want you to wake up to your own power. Yeah. Because then you don't need religion anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, I've noticed too that. I learned from my friend's mistakes. We only we only did that irresponsibly bad one night, man. My friend Cass had brought some spice up from Waverly. <laughs> And this this is definitely one of those irresponsible, like, I don't condone it, but I did it anyways. We were fucking snorting cocaine. 